Leprechaun 2 will begin momentarily, but not before I announce the winner of April's 1970s horror movie poll. The audience picked, the audience voted, and Carrie from 1976 is our number one winner. We have Eraserhead coming in at number two, House coming in at number three, and finally The Wicker Man coming in at dead last. Thank you to everyone who voted over at patreon.com slash horror soup. I would also like to give a big thank you to our newest donators, Melissa Salcedo, Case Barnhill, and Diane. Diane, Barnhill, Calcedo, Salcedo, damn it. You guys are what's keeping the show going. You guys are running our wheels, and we thank you for that. Clean green. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Lean, did we? This is Evil Bong Seven. Man, where's the crossover, bro? Where's the... I want. <laughs> no, 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 I want no a way. crossover. No, this is a fever dream that I don't want to be a part of. I, I do, do not want to see the Leprechaun hanging out with EB. That sounds like a great time. If Charles Band has nothing to do with it, then yes. maybe. Uh, like if 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 someone else is handling it. Yeah, and yeah, Warwick yeah. Davis is involved. I don't know. I guess I'll I'll accept it just to get Warwick Davis back in the Leprechaun suit. I would give anything but. to see Warwick Davis Warwick Davis Leprechaun with EB. That's just a dream mm-hmm. matchup. Yeah, uh, I I think your dreams what are do you mean? like they not tried as to grand. do it with the devil guy. The, the little devil. the. <laughs> they literally tried to do it. Uh, I don't know if we'd call him a leprechaun. Oh, my. He was, he was dressing up, you know. He was <laughs> dressing up. You're saying because they play dress up. Yeah. Okay, yeah, no, I'm following. <laughs> so, yeah, so we already had the crossover. We don't need it, James. Yeah, I guess you're right. We're, we're perfectly fine. Okay. Hey, guys, it's St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> not when this is releasing. And honestly, probably not, like, I think... <laughs> I think by the time this comes out, it'll be, like, a month and a half past St. Patrick's Day. Patrick's Maybe day? one day we'll be able but, to get this right. But we're recording this on St. Patrick's Day, so that counts for something, right? Happy Irish! Happy, Happy Irish. Irish! I got some, uh, I have some Irish liquor right here for all of us. Oh, Everyone, yeah. Uh, take your mm. pickle juice and your, um, Jameson. I'm sure this isn't exactly how they did it in Ireland. This is <laughs> how <I know>. um, <laughs> they did it during the potato famine. This is how they did it in my house right now on St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> Cheers, my friends. Um, we're going to go bar hopping later and do some Irish stuff, but for now we're talking about Leprechaun and uh, drinking a little bit of Irish whiskey and for the sake of... And pickle juice, of, uh, because, you know, pickle juice. When, you, when you think of Irish whiskey and St. Patty's Day... Yeah, think of me pickle juice. <laughs> to be fair, though, pickle juice is green. Oh, mm. shit. You pickle got me juice on that one. is green. So <laughs> this is a Irish tradition. Apparently. Oh. And no one can argue. Maybe, maybe not an Irish tradition, but a St. Patty's Day. It's a St. Patty's Day tradition for sure. <laughs> it's what we are going to do for Irish. Okay, so. I'd like, it, have, I'd like to let it be known that I'm just sipping this pickle juice now because I, I don't want to drink all of it at once. Oh, it's amazing. It's like my favorite part. I poured more for myself than I did for you two, and I It's slowly growing it. on me. More and more, I'm You've liking it. You've been going like up and down with it. Yeah. You're like, I hate it. It's the worst part of it. And then you're like, okay, yeah, yeah I see what they're doing with it. You got to get the right balance with it. Okay, so how Irish is everyone? Because though it doesn't tell you exactly when it's British and Irish, which one it is, Unfortunately, right? Unfortunately, yeah. So I'm 24.9%. Uh, I'm, I'm more than that. What would you say? What, what are you? Okay, tough guy. <laughs> you you want, do yours. I want, I, I want, I want to do his last. I want tough guy to I am 42.5% Jesus. British you guys Irish. Are Irish. Ooh, that was close. Uh, 55.4%. Jesus, you guys are Irish, yeah, man. Hey. You are the most Irish. Isn't it? <laughs> Irish, isn't it? <laughs> that does also mean that we're British. So, are you wait? Is yours just Irish? Uh, no, British it says it says British. It says British and Irish. Irish. Yeah. Okay, yeah. wow. So, uh, yeah, that is how Irish we all are. I think we just had to do that to you know set the episode in stone. Yeah, <laughs> um, Leprechaun okay. too. Leprechaun 2, 1994. Um, and also, if you guys are listening right now, but you're like, hey, I want to look at you guys. I want to see your faces. You can check it out on YouTube. Actually, we should probably just start uploading these on Spotify too, right? Uh, definitely the, the now. Video version. I think, yeah, I think yeah. this video, this 
kind of new vibe we got going with the cool on Spotify. Yeah, I got so it's a camera shot of all of us yeah. at the same time. Um, we're in my church that I built in my basement. <laughs> we're starting uh, we a cult. Some, really, we got some green uh, going. on. You guys on. are already a part of it. You didn't know. That's but, what you agreed to it by listening to the episode. Sorry. Hey man. <laughs> Cheers to that. You can only see it if you're watching this on possibly Spotify video or YouTube. (laughs) (laughs) Cheers, cheers, cheers. So today we are talking about Leprechaun Back to the Hood. Um, Wait, bring that back. Right? No, I don't think so. I I would say we're not. Are you guys sure? (laughs) So, Jimothy, do you want to tell the people what you did? Hey. First off... Hey guys, welcome to Horror Soup. I'm Caleb. <laughs> this is Devante. What the fuck? What? This is Tough Guy. <laughs> I'm Jimothy. Don't ever break character again. <laughs> um, today, we are discussing Leprechaun 2 from 1994. No, Leprechaun 6, Back to the Hood from 2003. You want to tell the people what you did? I watched the wrong movie. If they haven't (laughs) figured it out by now, then I mean, they're not dumb, but I'm just saying I don't think you laid it out I clearly watched the wrong movie. (laughs) You watched the... So, James walks in as we're finishing up. We go, hey, you ready to come over and record? He goes, yeah, I'll be on my way. Cool. We're about to finish the movie. He walks in. We're about probably five or seven minutes from it ending. He looks up at the screen for a second. He's kind of just like standing there watching. Not saying anything, and then after about maybe 45 seconds pass, he goes, yeah, I watched the wrong movie. (laughs) (laughs) Me and Tough Guy both look at him and go, wait, what? What could you have possibly watched? And he goes, watch Back to the Hood. You know what? It's got a leprechaun in the title. And it's got a it's two. Got a two. In it's got a two. I mean, like your heart was in the right place, and you got close. <laughs> but it's also St. Patty's Day, and we don't have enough time to watch Back to the Hood with him or get him to watch two. Because when Tough Guy showed up, he hadn't watched it either. So I already had to watch two twice in a row. And when James said he watched the wrong one, I was like, "Well, you didn't. I'm you not, didn't want to watch it back to back to back today." Look, I I was perfectly fine watching it a second time when Tough Guy came by. I said, "Cool, no issue with that." I'm not, I can't do three times, <laughs> but, um, no, that's fair. here we are. So, I mean, James is going to be basically pulling what I did in the scream virtuosity episode of scream. Um, that sounds stupid because the movie scream, but the show scream, whatever. Um, <laughs> doing scream and scream. Um, I basically watched virtuosity when Ash and Elena watched scream. Oh, I think that was the first one. Yeah. So the whole time I was just comparing, Russell Crowe's virtuosity to scenes and scream. And actually, I think they kind of go hand in hand. Interesting take. We'll come back to that. Okay. Uh, you can just listen to the episode. I'm not coming back to it today. But, um, yeah, this will be an interesting episode. Um, the interesting part about this is that James will never get to have a discussion of Leprechaun 2, but he will get to have two discussions of Back to the Hood when we eventually <laughs> watch Back to the Hood. <laughs> You know what? I'm okay with it because back to the hood, underrated. We're not talking about this. Underrated. Okay, you know what? I'll take underrated, and I and I'm not saying that I agree with it because I haven't watched it in a while, so I'd have to rewatch it. But I'm open to this conversation. I'll we'll put it this it. way: I was shocked. I'll, I'll I'll just leave it at I was shocked to see the Rotten Tomato score was like 20. percent like it's better than that. Okay, well, I, I wasn't going to start on scores, but if you're going to talk about that having a 20%, let's talk about the scores for this one. Okay. So, LEP2 currently holds a 2.3 out of 5 on Letterboxd, a 4.6 out of 10 on IMDb, and a 6% by Rotten Tomatoes critics with a 20% by the Rotten Tomatoes audience. Wow. How bullshit is it that Human Centipede Received nearly 50% by Rotten Tomato critics, and they give Leprechaun to... I know you didn't watch it right now. You watched parts of it with us. some of it. But Tough Guy. Yeah. You just did Human Centipede with us last episode. Yeah. Rotten Tomatoes critics gave that damn near 50%, and they gave this 6%. There's just undue hate on Leprechaun as a franchise. Rotten Tomatoes goes especially hard on the Leprechaun movies. I know there's a few of them where they rated it 0%. That's ridiculous. But also, the audience, 28%, that's not fair either. I mean, I don't know, like... No, it's a fun movie. Yeah, Um, like, I don't know, like, I I like this more than the ratings of the Letterboxd and the IMDb, but I'm like, I guess that's fair, you know, like, you're giving it, like, a two and a half or whatever, I guess you're saying, like, it's not a cinematic masterpiece, they're fucking Leprechaun movies. 
I'm not gonna like get like pissed about it and be like, you assholes, this is the best, you know. But like, I don't agree with it. But six percent, six percent. I mean that that sounds like a dog shit movie, and that I can means- tell you if it, even even just being a Leprechaun movie, even the worst Leprechaun movie, it's probably better than six percent. One hundred percent. I feel like most movies, and I know for a fact, like most movies that I watch do not get that bad of scores. I'm pretty sure we watched, a, I think most of the Evil Bongs were higher than that. <laughs> Legitimately. None of, none of the Evil Bongs that had scores were in single digits. They no. were like 20% or 30 100%. Like, like, putting it at six is, is like an insult. That is insane. That's where, <laughs> yeah. like, Rotten Tomatoes, I mean, Rotten Tomatoes, everyone in the world, I'm sure, knows that they're a bunch of bullshit, basically. We just talk about it for the fun of it. Yeah. But, come on, who are these critics? Who are these critics or that are letting Evil Bong get away with, like, low 20s and e- and fucking Leprechaun going single digit? Yeah, that's pretty nice. Often 0%. How... I don't think I saw a single Evil Bong with 0%. I saw one that, like, the whole page got 404 and shut down, <laughs> which I feel like kind of means that, but... even That's even worse than a 0%? It's definitely worse than a 0, so that was deserving. But the rest of them, that's just insane. I agree. Okay, so I went into the ratings a little too early, uh, so we're going to back up a little bit. So this was directed by Rodman Flender, who was also the director of Idle Hands. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Throws me off. I mean, I like this probably almost just as much as like Idle Hands, but um, pretty different vibes. And I don't, I don't know. It just doesn't seem like the same style. But uh, he he did the thing. He did the thing. Did I the think thing. that some of that, some of that dumb humor, though, you know, like I know that I didn't watch the whole movie, but I did see parts, and like some of that dumb humor was kind of the same, the same type mm-hmm. of humor as Idle Hands. You know, like that real classic, like for sure dad comedy like Hanna Barbera cartoons like Scooby Doo fucking like I don't know just Idle Hands and this kind of both have a little bit of that I would agree with that the humor was kind of you know I mean I think it got elevated in Idle Hands but right. I think I could see where they were, where they were going with this yeah um so speaking of fake names not Mark Jones but Mark Jones was credited as a writer who was the original writer of the first Leprechaun um, but everything I saw, like even like Warwick Davis, he was like, I don't remember seeing him on set like at all, even <laughs> though he was like credited. I think it was just because he credit he was creating it, but yeah. um, had created it. But I don't think he he's still credited as if he did something, you know, on this one. Mm-hmm. But I, from what I saw, even from him talking in like the special features, it seemed like he was like, yeah, no, I wasn't there. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> Turi Meyer, Turi T U R I, that's one of the writers. Alfredo Septin. Septin? I'm worried about the Alfredo. <laughs> like, I know that's a name, and I've met Alfredos. Yeah. But I don't know. Like, then when you say it like that, and when you see it kind of just singled out as like, oh, this is the writer of a movie, some guy named Alfredo. Alfredo. It just seems more like Chicken Alfredo than when you meet someone named Alfred. <laughs> but it's Does that Alfredo. make sense? It's Alfredo, man. I don't know, Alfredo. How, do you, I, think, I just how realized, do you think the pasta got its name, man? I just realized today that Alfredo's <laughs> a dumb name. <laughs> <laughs> You're basically pasta. There's Sauce. plenty of Alfredos out there. <laughs> I think that's why it's named that, is the guy who invented its name was Alfredo. I'm sure that's what it is, but now he ruined his name. <laughs> <laughs> and now everyone else is plagued by this curse. Anyway, um, the budget for Leprechaun 2 was $2 million. How much do you guys think it made? Yeah. Two million dollars. Uh, you're not wrong. <laughs> Two point three million dollars. <laughs> well, <laughs> <yes>. shit. <laughs> so uh, there was not uh, a lot going back in anyone's pockets from this one. Uh, it's rated R. <laughs> I want to talk about the special features. <laughs> so <laughs> they were very interesting because something that Warwick David said. Um, Davis, I uh, think auto corrected. Um, he said uh, all through the journey of these films, as they were leading up to happening. I was led to believe that I wasn't going to be involved. <laughs> and it's, and with the way he said it, it seemed like it was like not even just this movie. He's like, every time. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> and then he goes like, yeah, I heard names of these other short actors being thrown around, and I thought I was done. <laughs> and every time, I guess he popped back in. But I think they're just holding it over his head like, hey, you might not be Leprechaun this time. <laughs> Which seems crazy. And he even said he was like, I don't know if they were trying to like, you know, Pay me less, right, or like, like you know, him or something. Yeah, like, you know, like fuck with me. But right. this is basically what was happening, <laughs> and apparently, uh, in this case, they did try very hard to not cast him. Wow, 
But apparently no one wanted to be the leprechaun. <laughs> so <laughs> then, like, I think the, uh, from what I understood, it was a little confusing when they were explaining it. Like, I don't, like, the way that they edited this or shot this or whatever, or the way that someone explained this, something went wrong. Because it's not, like, if it was written down, it wouldn't be legible. And that doesn't make sense, <laughs> but trust me, it's just, it's all going together. Yeah. <laughs> they basically were like, yeah, well, <laughs> his agent accepted so I guess he was back in. <laughs> well, son of a bitch. So yeah, but really, I'm so glad though because if he didn't do this one, he probably wouldn't have come back. No, probably not. You if know, they, if they switched it up, it would have been done. I'm so sure. So then, I mean, we would have not had a legacy of Warwick Davis. But it also sounds like accounts. he he ran across this issue throughout every, time? every single movie. <laughs> if I'm to understand what he said properly. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then everyone in the in the special features is like, yeah, well, if he didn't show up, this movie would have sucked way more than it did. I agree. It's like, yeah, why did you ever think of replacing him? <laughs> and then why did you continue to think of replacing him after? Nonsense. I'm sure the producers got thrown around, too, because what I also saw is that, like, and I again, it seemed like they were talking about other Leprechaun movies as well. It seems like they're pretty much, like, scrapping the entire crew and getting a new crew every time. Jeez. To my knowledge. I don't know how yeah. long that went on for, and uh, but this was for the collection that you know that i watched right. it from the dvd collection so it's by the time like pretty much all of them are released yeah so i think it might hold a little bit of weight you know yeah, yeah, yeah. Prob probably a pattern there um i'm also convinced that the director ron rodman flender <laughs> crazy name i'm pretty sure he either doesn't remember directing the movie or he just didn't yeah the little clip that you showed us he was just rambling about other things not about the movie the whole time, like, I watched 20 minutes of the director's commentary, and for that first 20 minutes, all he does is repeat exactly what was just said on screen, and then he goes, yeah, I like that. G good good facial expressions. Fantastic yeah. face. That's a quote that I wrote down. <laughs> he said, good facial expressions. Fantastic, Fantastic face. face. I like that. <sighs> so, I mean, like, he didn't really give me much, much background, and I stopped watching the director's commentary, like, about 25 minutes in, because I was like, all right, you're not... You're not giving me anything that's going to help with this episode. <laughs> he also said that he tried watching the movie in Starbucks, and people started leaving. What? And let's just go ahead and break this down. What? What? So, every time he mentions a scene that he was quote-unquote watching, when people quote-unquote left the Starbucks... Like, absolutely nothing horrible is happening. Like, at one point during the director's commentary, he's like, yeah, this was on the screen right here. Oh, it's when um, Cody and Bridget are driving the hearse with, like, Clint Howard and a few other oh, people in yeah. it. And then they go to that one chick's house, and she throws water on the on the, on oh, the door. yeah. He said people left Starbucks when they looked at his screen, and that was happening. Huh. There's no... So, okay, so... So you mean they were just leaving Starbucks? <laughs> so people happened to be people, at that time. People were just leaving Starbucks. Like this. Yeah. Like, okay, well, I, I came to the conclusion that this Rodman guy, his ego must be so inflated that he thought he was the fucking star of Starbucks, dude. He's the he's the main character. He's the main character, and people care so much about what he's watching, and people are paying so much attention to what he's watching on his laptop, probably with headphones on him. Man, you know what? You know what they probably left? He's probably like, oh, I just, you know, it was so weird. People just started leaving the Starbucks when I'm in here. He's probably watching it with full blast, like with speakers <laughs> plugged into it, like a fucking like JBL mini boombox plugged into his laptop, just blasting it. And he's like, well, I just don't know why people are leaving. Yeah. It's either he's doing that, or he's just watching it with headphones, and people ordered their Starbucks and then left. He's the only dipshit that's sitting in Starbucks all day. Why? I, also, why is he watching it in Starbucks? There we go. If home. I directed a movie, why am I sitting in Starbucks <laughs> watching the movie that I directed that I never wanted to watch? Yeah, because that's what he's complaining about all the time, too. He's like, yeah, I never watched this movie. I'm like, well, did you at least watch it after it was edited? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe he did. It's but uh, that's confusing. I mean, I don't hate this movie. I think it turned out pretty good. I mean, Actually, I've, this I've is... hung out at a Starbucks before. Don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm not unfamiliar with the concept. No, yeah, and people do go to Starbucks sometimes to do things, but I don't get why he was. But to be doing that specific thing at a Starbucks, also, like, I don't know, like, if I am going to watch a movie that I did direct, I might want to, like, 
watch it where I can actually like pay attention and see what's going on and not on a laptop at yeah. a Starbucks. Yeah. I don't know, man. This this Flender guy. This just... is this is just strange. I don't know. Seems like strange behavior. It's bizarre. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, Maybe this is totally normal. And honestly, I I don't I could even get over all that stuff. It's just the fact that he's like, yeah, everyone's leaving because I was watching this movie. Like, yeah, I think he's I think all it is in my mind, all it is is he's just trying to say like, oh yeah, this movie's so bad, and he's right. just trying to like, accentuate that point. Yeah. Right. You know, it's he's just like, just this fun. is so bad, you know, and I could, and I know it's bad because I hadn't watched it in years, and I watched it in public, and oh my god, everyone just was like, oh, this is the worst movie. I gotta leave. He's just, and I don't know, I don't know. I think he thinks it's cool to like hate have on his ever, own movie. Have you ever yeah. been at a public place? And s- looked over someone's shoulder to see what media they're consuming, and, and then, then been so disgusted <laughs> that you left. Like the only time that's acceptable is if they're like literally watching porn, right? Because then you'd like like that genuinely be weird if you were in a public place. Well, yeah. And so it was just like straight up watch a porn, and not even that. <laughs> it would have to be like some fucked up porn because if they're just watching like porn. <laughs> Then I'm just gonna laugh at them and be like, ah, dickheads jerking off over here. Look at this guy. <laughs> but like, you'd have to be watching some fucked up porn for me to go like, oh, whatever. Oh, I need to leave. <laughs> whatever I'm doing, <laughs> I have to leave because you're doing something. Right, right, right. Not, not. Hey, you should leave. Hey, I need to leave <laughs> because you're watching Leprechaun Two. They just make it make sense. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> Flunderman, you're a fucking dick. Maybe they were just huge fans of Leprechaun 2 when they were like, we should not be in the presence of the director. The whole... <laughs> they're probably pissed. If they are Leprechaun fans, they're pissed because they're like, this guy's just shitting on his own movie. He's like, right, oh, yeah. you fucking assholes. <laughs> That's kind of how I felt about Maybe the, be happy that some people that like your movie. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, come on, man. I'm one of the biggest dickheads around here, and I still think you're kind of a dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> that says something. Let's get into the movie. Uh, when we begin, the leprechaun is trying to capture an entire man with like some old-timey shackles, and then he does. And the man is like, hey, Oh, man, man. the movie starts God with a preacher man at a <laughs> youth center. <laughs> James and he sends he like he like summons hands from hell to take Leprechaun down into hell. James, we'll get to back to the hood. Oh, okay, sorry. sorry. We'll get there. <laughs> All right, we'll get there. <laughs> so the man that is not at a youth center pleads for to Lep for some help. He's like, "Hey, man, get me out of these shackles." And then Lep is like, "Hey, your shoes, ah, you a little bitch." You look stupid. You got some dumb shoes on. And then he loosens the man's restraints because he's like, yeah, I feel bad for you. You look like a little idiot. And uh, as Lep and the man begin to wander along the forest, Lep is like, yeah, so I have this plan. It's to find a wife. And the guy goes, wow, you you date? And he's like, yeah, man. I get mad. All right. And <laughs> he's like, all right, so how are you going to get any woman near you? And he goes, simple, dude. You know, I might be a boil-filled tree goblin that isn't too far from Cyrax, but if I get this girl to sneeze three times, not once, not twice, thrice, and no one says bless you, there you go. She's my wife. (laughs) And see, you didn't experience this because you didn't. (laughs) You weren't there. The lore is great. (laughs) But no one can say bless you. And it has to be the English version of bless you. Holy or, shit. Or it can't be, or may, I guess it could be like, oh, bless you, me laddie. <laughs> <laughs> me pot of gold. <laughs> but he goes a step further and he tells the man that when his wife has been obtained, the man will have freedom. So naturally the guy's like, dude, cool. All right. Like, let's go find your wife. I'm trying to get out of here. By the way, this is also like. Like the ni- early 1900s or late 1800s, right? Yeah. Something like that? Uh, when was... Uh, no, no, it has to be 1800s because this came out in 94, so I think it was like 1894 yeah. or something yeah, yeah, like yeah. that. 100 years before, right? No, it said 1,000. Oh, 1,000? 1, 1, oh, okay. There you go. Am I right or am I wrong now? Yeah, that should be wrong it, now? right? Okay, yeah. You had me questioning my math. You thought, my bad, my bad. You thought 1994 minus 100 went to... No, I thought that I read that it said he comes back every hundred years. Okay, gotcha. That, that was, yeah, yeah. No, it's every thousand years because he's like, oh, I'll be back on my next thousandth birthday. Yeah, okay. okay. So it also implies that he's like a, a few thousand years old, you know, at least a few thousand years mm-hmm. old. I don't know exactly how old he is, but um. anyway, 
Anyway, he's trying to get the wife of his dreams. So when they come across the woman that the leprechaun wants, she's revealed to be none other than <laughs> the, the slave dude's daughter. And she's just doing laundry. She's doing laundry, just, just like, you know, up some uh, sheets on, on yeah. the little like string, you know, laundry, because, you know, it's the like 1800s. And he goes, oh, no, Mr. Leprechaun, please, no. That's my daughter. Yeah, <laughs> just like that. <laughs> also, the director's commentary, the only fact that they said at all, they were like, you know, that guy's actually Irish. They're like, pretty cool to have an Irish guy in the movie. And I'm like, what, you mean the guy that was in the movie for two seconds and then died? (laughs) Who said, oh, that's my daughter. Don't fuck my daughter. And then died? That's your Irish representation? By the way, this is the only leprechaun to take place, the only leprechaun movie to take place on St. Patty's Day. Which, Which, why wouldn't they all? Yeah, it seems like a kind of a disgrace, I would like it if they start on St. Patty's Day and then he's just still around like a few weeks later, you know? But like, (laughs) it's it's kind of like whack that none of them happen to be on St. Patty's Day. I assumed they all were. I had no idea. Before this, I just thought it was like a given. It was like, yeah, St. Patty's Day. But apparently that's not what's happening. It's just this one. Why wouldn't the first be? It was whatever. Well, I guess the first one you get away with it because it's some Irish dude who's just like, oh, this leprechaun, I caught him. He's back in me house. Oh, give me me Jameson. (laughs) He was drinking Jameson. That was the movie. (laughs) Shout out Jameson, though, because honestly, they said in this movie, too, remember when that old guy, he's drinking Canadian whiskey and Leprechaun's like, hey, fuck that dude. (laughs) Only Irish whiskey around here. Irish whiskey's the best. He's right. right. I don't know. What do we all say? Do you guys like how we feel about Irish whiskey? I love Irish whiskey. It's fun. Jameson's like... It's in my top. It's fine. Might not be the best whiskey in the world, but like for the price, that's the best whiskey for the price, man. Mm. For sure. Agreed. So what's your favorite whiskey, James? Favorite whiskey? Yeah. Uh, Lagable one. Okay. What what whiskey do you really like? James. Uh, Other scotches? Jameson has your name in it. I know. So you know what? You're being racist. (laughs) Anyway. It's just, it's just, it's just a blended whiskey, man. Like, yeah, it's no, fine. I'm not really that. It's fine. I don't really care that it's much. It's just fine. Also, I'm just trying to. It's just it's, fine. No, you're right. It's for the price. You know? <laughs> Quality for price. You're all right. I'll, I'll put it this way. I'm glad to see a bottle of Jameson on this bench and not a bottle of Kirkland Irish whiskey. <laughs> you want to know something? <laughs> God damn it. This is Kirkland Irish whiskey you've you been drinking. You lying sack of shit. You want to smell it? You, you lying smell sack it? of shit. Smell it. It's Kirkland Irish no. whiskey you've been drinking this whole time. Oh my God. <laughs> you've been bamboozled, bud. You're sitting over there lying to everybody. I'm not lying about the fact that Jameson You're over here. My Shout out whiskey. Jameson and you're filling the <laughs> hey, fucking Heinz sho- bottles with I great value. I showed a bottle of Jameson. This is a bottle of Jameson. I can't believe you. This is however filled with Kirkland Irish whiskey. <laughs> the only reason is because they were out of Jameson when I went. I needed some goddamn Irish whiskey. Wow, man. He poisoned us. <laughs> He believes it's been a whole you thing. All believe it. On St. Patrick's Day. You guys see how the placebo works? Not so Irish. It's okay. Yeah. It's your Irish. own Irish brothers. How could you? Look, man. Your own <laughs> brethren. Look, you guys got got. I don't know what to say. You guys got got and you get get. No, I like both. I'm cool with Kirkland. I don't care. I'll drink Kirkland. You got get. You get got. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so... They're across, they come the across dude the dude runs room. away, and then... He does run away. Well, she sneezes once. Oh, yeah. And then she sneezes twice. Yeah. And then he's, like, holding it back. He's like, oh, oh what am I going to do? And then she sneezes, and he goes, God bless you. And then he runs away. Yeah. <laughs> and at first, I kind of forgot that the bless you What's breaks the, the curse, because yeah, I remember yeah. the whole sneeze thing. It's been a few years since I've watched this one. It was a sacrifice. One. Yeah, but I forgot yeah. that if you say bless you, it cancels, and I was like... He just ran away. What is that going to do? He's still going <laughs> to fuck your daughter now. But then I was like, oh, wait. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> After like five minutes past, I was like, oh, the bless you. So that's when that he canceled. goes and then uses the force to lift him up. Cause... Yeah. The Leprechaun <laughs> is definitely like on some Emperor Palpatine shit in this movie. <laughs> like, And I'm sure he I'm, I feel like I remember him saying, do it <laughs> at some point. <laughs> But yeah, he tries to run away, and then he lifts him using the force, (laughs) snaps his neck, and then the leprechaun disappears, and the woman runs over to find her deceased father. And this is, uh, so Bridget and Cody are going to be the mains in this movie, and right now this is like early 
1800s Bridget. And she like looks up and screams before the title card. But the angle that they did it on, it was great. Like she had this sideways angle, like just really 90s, like really for the time. But it was like a... Like her head like turned so fast, like almost like some demon shit happened to her. And she was yeah. just like... Ah! <laughs> and it was freeze framed and then went to the title card. It was incredible. Like I made tough guy. I yeah. had to rewind it and show him because I was like, look at this, look at this. And he was like, I missed it. it Sounds good. It was pretty it's sick. awesome. Like I, I don't know. I love that shit. It was almost like. <laughs> Never mind, because that makes it seem less cool. I was gonna say like troll two, but. <laughs> <laughs> but it was cooler. Anyway, uh, title card, and then we're in Los Angeles, which we it takes are. a while to get there. Yeah, in the beginning of the movie, Tough Guy was like, where does it take place? Someone, I don't remember. And at one point, it went, LAPD's finest. Uh, don't mess with the cops. Uh, it's some dude who's, like, trying to, like, you know, get out of the crime he just committed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's Morty. Yeah. yeah oh, it Morty. ends up being Morty. It's Morty yeah. when he was picking up Cody from yeah. the... Uh, 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 he got caught driving a hearse with Clint Howard in it. Yeah. So they were like, naturally... <laughs> We have to arrest you. <laughs> so it took that long to uh, figure out that it was in L.A. Yeah, and that's how we found out. Just because he said LAPD, and you went, L.A. L.A. <laughs> <laughs> it is. I think most of the leprechauns are... Three's in Vegas. California. Oh, okay. Three's in Vegas. That's yeah. the leprechaun. The first one we cover, me and Brewer... No, not... Me and a Brie covered, but not the Brie. <laughs> um, that's pretty funny, actually. And then Leprechaun 3, I think me and Brie did. Gotcha. I think we did that. Oh, we did that one first. I think that was like a long time ago. <laughs> we did three and then we did one. Yeah. But yeah, so no, Vegas. I love Vegas. That one was awesome. That's a great Leprechaun movie. You um, know what else goes to Vegas? What? Evil Bong 7. 7 7. seven. Continue. You know, it's not sure. quitting the series if we talk about the series <laughs> every episode. About it. Well, it's completely altered the way seven that I right view now. film. <laughs> This is Evil Bong 7 episode, so I'm keeping it. I made a point earlier that James is being <coughs> way too easy on movies nowadays because <laughs> all he knows is Evil Bong. And it also, right. you know what I realized today? I looked at my letterbox. Guess how many movies I've watched this year? 10. Tough guy? Um, like 30. James was closer. I've watched 14 movies this year oh. and easily... Like, nine of those had to have been Ginger Dead Man and Evil Bong movies. Yep. Mm. I think those things made me want to not watch movies so bad that I stopped the whole year without realizing it. I've just been watching TV. Same. So, uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting back into watching movies. You're picking stuff, and I'm excited, man. It's I watched great. the wrong one this time, but, like, <laughs> I still had a great time. It's a movie. <laughs> it's something. It's an actual movie. So, okay, anyway. So after the title card, we watch a scam unfold, kind of like um, when those assholes did a single flip on the Venice Beach boardwalk and people donated oh. like $1,000 to them. Yeah. yeah, that shit. And then at the end, they go, what, you think one of you could do it? Yeah. <laughs> Let's hear some noise. Come on. We've talked about this before. <laughs> I don't think we did, did Not, we? I don't I, know if we've really broken it down. I thought we did. Up, like, in Who the wants other... to take it? Yeah. Who had the most... <sighs> annoying time with that. <laughs> Dude, that part was crazy. So, okay. <laughs> wait, wait what did you say? Like, Sorry, I'll I don't take... think... Who wants to I... take the lead on the story is what he's saying. Oh, the stories of what happened? Yes, I couldn't yeah. even I couldn't even keep up with the names he was saying about all the houses and stuff. What are you talking about? Who are you talking, are you about? talking about? What are we talking about? What? The... No, answer no, me. What I, are you I thought we were talking about the level. Dark Side Tour. The Dark Side Tour. What is wrong with this guy? I don't know. Are you having a stroke? No, Leprechaun 2? When we were on you the Venice You remember when we went to Venice Beach? Beach oh, I was not. Walk. I thought we were moving on. I did not think <laughs> yeah, we were telling the Yeah, to the Venice story. Beach story. No, we I, didn't, I don't want to think story. about that. That was stupid. Those Do you know skins. what it was? What a scam. That's what it was. I said that. Do you know what it was beside that? <laughs> Do you no, want to know what it was? I didn't care. I was <laughs> I'll tell you what talk, it was. He has no idea what happened. No, the backflip thing and the circ What are you talking about? Tell me one thing that I didn't say about that. What? <laughs> that was it. We were standing in a circle of people. Okay. And no, they were remembers. like sitting yeah. in and they were all like standing or something. Then the dude like took his shirt off and jumped over. I don't remember what position, but then he jumped over all of them. Okay, no, he remembers. Yeah. It, it, the details are foggy and the explanation is awful, but he does I, I'm trying to forget it. It was stupid. <laughs> He's not wrong. So no, you got to remember that shit so you don't get caught up again. So him say <laughs> okay, so tough guys terrible at telling stories. It wasn't that we were sitting and people were standing and then flip. It was <laughs> it was actually there's a whole 
There's a couple like performers popping up on Venice Beach, yeah, the boardwalk. Okay. They pop up, quote unquote. I mean, we're not <laughs> okay. gonna call them that. There's it's just a for whole, the sake of the story. A, there's a whole goddamn. There's a group of morons. Song and dance. Yeah, they have a boombox, and that means that they're professional. Yeah. So they pop up with this boombox. They're like, "Hey, everybody, come on, gather around. We're gonna do some crazy shit. We come here from across the lands to." Do, do some crazy stuff. Crazy shit. They you're don't never gonna believe what you're gonna don't see. Don't tell you this what they're crazy doing. Crazy stuff right here. They don't here. do anything. But before don't they don't it. do anything, you have no idea. They go, hey everyone, how much are you gonna donate? Oh yeah, come on. And you know they get they do they use these buzz the buzz uh fuck they use these buzzwords. So like you know every time someone gives like a good amount of money, they're like, oh yeah, shout to this guy. Fuck yeah, this we're is like oh blah, where are you blah. from? So and so. And then every, yeah, that's what everyone from every small nothing town wants to give money, so their little so town they, gets a shout because out. Because then yeah. they represent their town. He's like, <laughs> oh you're from Akron, Ohio, Cyrax. Fuck yeah, dude. He gave twenty dollars. Anyone want to give more than this? So we yeah, can scream yeah, a little yeah. louder for your small town. <laughs> they do that. They get probably a thousand bucks from a bunch of idiots. They walk up to us, and they, at one point they're like, "Hey, you got anything?" We're like, "Nah." So we gave them no money, but I still wanted to see where it was going. I wanted to see where it was going and see what they were gonna do. But it was like I knew they weren't gonna do anything. It's like I'm not giving you money unless you do something cool. I'm not giving you money for saying you're gonna do something cool. <laughs> Like, that's bullshit. <laughs> so we say no, and then they basically bully us in front of everyone. They're like, they're like, oh, these broke son of a bitches over here. These fucking yep. scumbag assholes. And we just look at each other like, <laughs> all right. Yeah, and I was like, you still want to see what's going on? We're like, yeah, fuck it. Let's watch. Because <laughs> at this point, it's like, all right, let's watch them do something stupid. So we could be like, you guys are the dumbasses. We dumb can asses. feel validated. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, at that point. And then they're just like, yeah, they have five, seven people just crouching, you know, or like standing, doing a variation of crouching and standing. First off, they're all standing. And, also, and they're oh. like, this guy's going to jump over this line of five That's people. That's what they're saying. They're going to stand over these five people. And also, I think it was like three people. And, there, and I mean, some of the dudes were pretty tall. I was like, damn, this guy's actually going to like vault over. Like, that's pretty and impressive. We were I'll watch this about shit. That. We were like, you know what? If they actually do this jump, maybe I'll give you the $10 that I didn't give you before. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Maybe I'll even give you a fucking 20 or something. Like, and if I'm you do all something amped up cool. in it. And then like... The last second, right no, before like, the guy right jumps, before he's gonna jump. they tell everyone to get down leapfrog style. Hey, everyone, crouch as low as you can. As low. I was like, I probably could have jumped over those motherfuckers, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> I've played leapfrog before. Come on, dude. And there was a lot of adjusting. The guy was like, all right, all right, move over. Okay, over here, over here. I remember. You're right. There was a lot. Oh, yeah. He made sure they were. It wasn't just crouch like, where you were. Was, it was yeah. like. He was making sure it was as easy as, as tight possible. as possible so he doesn't and clip then right anybody because he, does he doesn't have liability insurance. 100%. <laughs> and then right after he does the flip, you're like, okay, well, he's at least going to do something else. These people just swindled like fucking 1000 1500 bucks out of all these That's people. That's what I thought. I was around. like, okay, he does that, and then he's going to do a thing now. He's going to do something cooler. It's going right. to amp up. Yeah. That was it. And then they go, all right, thanks, everyone. <laughs> they just walk away as fast as they can. <laughs> so fast and everyone who donated money is just looking around like, like what just happened and they're not even pissed they're trying to figure out what just happened yeah. they're trying to track what just like, happened hang on where am i oh yeah i'm on the Venice beach boardwalk and then i look at uh uh james and tough guy and i go yeah welcome to california because <laughs> that was our first time in california or i guess you hadn't been since you were like yeah three it's or been something. a long time been so, a long time yeah so yeah, um, just a just a heads up. If you guys ever go to the Venice Beach Boardwalk, there are talented people there, and there are people doing cool things. But really, the rule is you you don't give money until they do the cool thing, <laughs> because people are there trying to scam you, and they will. You know, they've been th these people were touring around the world scamming people. Like, mm, yeah, man. <laughs> so profession. Anyway, <laughs> that's what's going on in the movie right now. So naturally, the first tourist couple brought into the scam are played by none other than Kimmy Robertson, who you might not immediately recognize. Maybe you will. I could be wrong. But you might recognize her uh, as Lucy Moran from Twin Peaks. James, probably you. Oh, you might have been a little Lucy, interested if okay. you were watching this movie. But <laughs> she pops in. She's also Lisa from the top billing episode of Tales from the Crypt, which we actually did on Patreon a long time ago. I don't think mm. I think it might have been me and Bree. I don't know who was on that one with me, but um, she's also Miss Galloway from Drake and Josh. She's only in one episode, but I feel like a lot of people saw the episode because it's a, kind of a it's memorable a, it's role. A standout episode. It's a pretty good episode. Um, and she's a prominent voice actress. Uh, she was the feather duster in Beauty and the Beast. 
Well, shit. So, I mean, come on, man. The Feather Duster? Doesn't get much better than that. Come on. Uh, the second tourist who is dating Mrs. Kimmy Robinson is none other than Ice Cream Man and Silent Night, Deadly <laughs> Night extraordinaire mm. and Ron Howard's brother. <laughs> Younger brother, let me say. <laughs> Younger brother. Look at pictures of them. Which is always the shocking part, Look right? at pictures of them when they're the same age. <laughs> Younger brother. <laughs> Clint Howard. Clint Howard. Good old Clint, man. I love Clint Howard. Amazing. Anytime I see him in anything, I'm so excited. We should really do the Ice Cream Man and honestly even Evil Speak soon. Yeah. Because Clint Howard, man. Clint Howard. A plus. You, you know he's Ricky in Silent Night, Deadly Night 4 and 5? I knew oh. he was in 5, but I didn't know he was in both of them. And that's just crazy that you go from Ricky in Silent Night, Deadly Night 2 with the giant eyebrows and the red car right, yeah, yeah, to yeah, Clint yeah, yeah. Howard. I mean, how long later can it be that you're Clint Howard? I mean, he's Ron Howard's <laughs> younger brother. Younger brother. Well, there's a difference between Clint Howard's age and how he looks. I, yeah. <laughs> you you want to say that loud? You want to say that softer for the people in the back? I mean, yeah, there's a difference, I mean, buddy. He's, he's looked like an old man since he was like 10. I just, I'm just trying to think like I'm Ron Howard. Clint Howard is born. Ron Howard he starts to grow up, and Ron, it's like, what's happening? But Ron Howard, who think about it, also was like a child actor, like, like on the Andy Griffith show, like, yeah. like Ron Howard was like a cute little kid. I mean, like the closest thing to a Macaulay Culkin of the time. Yes, and mm. then this is what his younger brother. Looks and then like. Benjamin Button is born. <laughs> But he doesn't Poor get guy. any younger. Poor guy. <laughs> like that dude has been I bald. Love, I love him to death, but geez, he's just a one weird of my looking man. He's one of my favorite. Like not like obviously not a very prominent prominent actor in horror, but as for smaller horror actors, who's like you know they've been in some movies, yeah. they're around, you know, like you see them, they're like that's fun. He's like one of my favorites he's easily. Up there. Every time he pop, dude, the Ice Cream Man is fucking hilarious, and it. If anyone else played that role, it wouldn't be hilarious. Oh, yeah. Not like him. I mean, he's just like, <laughs> he looks like, <laughs> they should cast him in The Hills Have Eyes. <laughs> in the in the most respectful way. I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> so we're following Cody now. Played by Charlie Heath. Doesn't have a lot of roles. Bridget also doesn't have a ton of roles. But she's played by uh, Siobhan Durkin who also played Wendy in Tammy and the T-Rex. Like I said, not a lot of roles, but Tammy and the T-Rex. Okay. That's not like, I don't think Wendy was a main character yeah. in Tammy and the T-Rex, but obviously not Tammy. It wasn't Tammy. Well, no. It's Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> From Wendy's. Um, so they head back to Cody's place to look for Morty. I'm going to start calling Marty real soon in my notes, so just be prepared for me to start fucking up because I go back and forth. Um, but Marty is out doing St. Patty's Day activities at a local bar, which is what I'm trying to be doing right now. And Morty is played by Sandy Barron, who is in four episodes of Seinfeld as Jack Klompus. Hmm. You guys remember Jack Klompus? Nope. No. Oddly enough, I remember this character. Anyway, <laughs> my grandpa watched a lot of Seinfeld. Um, when we head over to Morty, he's attempting to conjure up a business deal with a man who's fully passed out on the bar. <laughs> like, this guy's out. Yeah. He's no, not conscious. He's not moving at all. And he's like, hey, man. Uh, 401k? I'm retired. You want to give me your 401k? Why is uh, the bartender letting this happen? I don't think he is. I don't think he gives a shit about what's happening. <laughs> but Morty really thinks he gives a shit about what's happening. Because he goes, hey, uh, we got a deal, right? And then he grabs the dude by his hair and then shakes his head and he goes, great. We're in business. And he looks at the bartender and he goes, hey, barkeep, you saw that, right? There's a binding contract. Yeah. <laughs> You're a witness to this transaction. Barkeep doesn't even answer him, but, you know, he's a witness. Um, oh. When we... <laughs> so after this transaction, Marty passes out. Like, <laughs> he goes, hey, Barkeep, another shot. Gives him water. And then he's like, what is this, you oh, piece of shit? Yeah. <laughs> water? Water. H2O? I thought this was grain liquor. <laughs> he falls out. He's done. And then uh, Marty, by the... God damn it. He seems to be some kind of, like, uncle or mentor to Cody. That's the reason why he's in this story right now. And he's also... The, James, this is a great episode, actually, I just realized, because you're sitting here listening to this as if it was a podcast. Mm -hmm. So if at any point I say shit that doesn't make sense, you could be like, wait a second. 
Me works. as a podcast listener, I don't understand what's going on in this movie right now. <laughs> Bro, I'm trying to listen. Is it going? How's <laughs> it going so far? Great. Cool. What's happened in the movie? Re- read back everything I just said word for word. No, we're at a bar. <laughs> we're at a bar. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Okay, you take it from here, James. I'm gonna take this shot. <laughs> All right, and then that is whenever we're at the hair salon with Emily, and she's trying to save up all her cash to go to college. <laughs> but everybody thinks that that's bullshit. Yeah, I'm going to take it from here. We're back into Back to the Hood. <laughs> <laughs> Tough guy, take it from here. Uh, we're, we're at the bar. We're still at the bar. Go back to James. James, take it from here. All right, and then... <laughs> Everybody thinks that's bullshit because nobody from the hair salon ends up going to college. Did you take notes for this? Yes! (laughs) (laughs) You're getting too much pleasure out of this. I feel like this is sabotage. (laughs) Just for the wrong thing. (laughs) I came prepared, but not at all. (laughs) It's like you did, but like in the grand scheme of things. I didn't. (laughs) Okay, I'm dying at this. Anyway, so Cody. Cody is like, all right, I have to help us execute this $300 scam because they got everyone on this hearse. It's supposed to be like a tour guide thing. Morty is supposed to lead this tour guide. He's like Mr. fucking Dickenferter or whatever. And he's supposed to, you know. He's the tour guide. He's the driver. He's the tour guide. (laughs) But the bartender, he's like, well, obviously this guy isn't going to do well. Uh, We have this thing where I give you a bucket of ice and you guys go into the bathroom and then duck his face in the bucket of ice to sober him up. It seems like this is something that happens, I was going to say every Tuesday, but it's every day. This is an everyday thing that happens with these people. Yeah, they're just used to it. They're like, oh, I guess he's back and then get the bathroom ready. And look, I'm sure it's a lot in the same vein of like every time you guys come here i'm like ah shots yeah we're you like, know get- it's a problem but i don't have to be in a bucket of ice at the end of the night so <laughs> it's not a problem it's a fun time but you may end up in a bucket of ice i just give it 10 years <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's a get who wants to take bets <laughs> no <shut up. laughs> it is saint patty's day um <laughs> anyway <laughs> Marty tries to act sober for about three minutes until he calls it quits because he's like, you know what? Maybe I can't drive. <laughs> and then Cody's like, you know what? Maybe you can't. So I'm going to do the tour myself. So now Cody is hosting the tour as Varen Von Cody. And uh, they first stop at a house that tries to pass off. You as forgot the- to say that he has to take his date. Yeah, she's not happy about that. No. Bridget's pretty pissed about she's it. She's a passenger to this tour date you're right because she thought that he was gonna he was starting the scam he was gonna pass it off to mr morty mm-hmm. and then morty was gonna go do the tour they were gonna yeah. go out on a date yeah so yeah it's this whole thing that's so now it's like, a date it's a haunted date you're right and that is important <laughs> because she is going to totally try to like you know make him very jealous with another man and it worked pretty soon it worked but also i feel like cody was pretty level-headed about it so i mean shout out to cody yeah he was yeah, like you know right. like i get it he was like i kind of Fucked you over. Nope. You were kind of pissed. The All other right, guy on. got his head leveled, so we'll get to that. He did. I would say more like his face leveled, yeah, honestly. all of it. But, <laughs> yeah, he definitely did. So, he goes off to do this tour, Varen Van Cody. They stop at this house that's supposed to be the final resting place of Bella Lugosi. And he gets handed, like, the wrong note cards. And he's like, wrong note card. Gets the right note card. And he goes, all right. Now I'm going to start reading this. But before he can even get to his spiel, the owner of the house runs outside, throws a bucket of water on the car, and is like, get the fuck out of here. No one's dead here. He's alive. <laughs> He's in my house doing fine. Bella who? Get out. And they drive off real quick. This whole tour is going to be him just driving off real fast because he doesn't know what to do and when to do it. So he's going to find himself in very bad situations. This was Leprechaun in the Hood right here, right? Yeah. Okay. So the next spot is a graveyard where a homeless man is hanging out. He scares them off. And then we fall, uh, the homeless man being, he scares the hearse off filled with Cody and everyone else. And then we follow the old timer for a bit. Naturally, he runs in the leprechaun. And this is bad for him because not only is he drinking Canadian whiskey, he also has a gold tooth. Mm. Oh, yeah. He's got a grill, man. What are you talking about? (laughs) (laughs) His one tooth grill. (laughs) Yeah. So he, um, you know, it's going to be bad. Leprechaun likes gold. Leprechaun stole a gold tooth in my movie, too, guys. (laughs) From who? 
<laughs> it was from a lady. It was from a lady? What'd she yeah. do? Had a gold tooth. Uh, that's that's <laughs> the that's a crime when leprechauns <laughs> around. So I I believe it. And leprechaun goes, there may be a bit of pain because I forgot me Nova Kane. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good, man. You cannot tell me that that's not the most clever line in the world. <laughs> pain and Nova Kane, dude, that goes hard. <laughs> What? He's taking his gold tooth. He's popping dentist. The- Clint <laughs> Howard was a dentist later. Dentist too. He was in the dentist. I don't remember if he was a dentist. This guy, he's not. It's a. Uh, he fuck. was in the dentist too, though. What's his name? Yeah, who Shit. is the dentist? He's, in, he's, he's the, the dad in Psych. Uh, fuck. Wait. What's his name? Burnson. Sh- Rodman Flunderman. <laughs> <laughs> Cor- Corbin Burnson. I think is his name. Ned Flanders. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was amazing. <laughs> is what I have to say. This guy's, this guy's over here just finding out the pain and Novocaine rhyme. Uh, dude, I've heard so you many songs you with Novocaine. that rhyme. I've heard so many songs. <laughs> nah, so many. You talking about after 1994? Before and after. Yeah, you stuttered. After, sure. It's it's, it's <laughs> tough. Guy. I always you stutter. Man. Name a song before 1994 that rhymes pain with Novocaine. Know. I wasn't prepared for that, but I exactly. know I've heard it. If I don't get a message about it, didn't happen. I bet I can find something. All right. Find some, you know, you got to do it because you don't even know what we're talking about. I know. I got, I got plenty of time <laughs> to got Google. time today. Anyway, he tears his tooth out. He pours a bunch of Canadian whiskey all over his face to deter infection, but it won't work because it's Canadian. So he lets the dude run off, and the scene is about to end, but not before he makes his pot of gold appear out of thin air so that he can uh, add the newly acquired gold tooth to his collection. And now, since he added it to his collection, if that gold tooth is missing, he will feel it, but he won't really feel it. He'll only notice it when he's counting it, but he'll say that he can feel it. Yeah. That's a leprechaun rule. He's got feelings. I love the Leprechaun rules probably more than any other movie's rules. They stick to them, I think. They well, don't. The, they don't. I mean, they and, don't. They, and like each movie, right? No, I, just, no, I, can, I, saw, I, can, I can tell you this nope. much. The sneezing thing never comes up again. Oh. He never tries to find a wife again, though. <laughs> but uh. he, it doesn't come up because he's not looking. He doesn't care. He's, he doesn't he's give fine, a shit. No, he's fine with being single for a while. He's like playing his cards. But, but... The only things that really stay true is that the leprechaun constantly like like turns into other people or like takes their voice to go like ah help oh, me yeah. help me like I, I remember that happening pretty often. There's a couple other things, but you got a pain double again. I saw your eyebrows bounce. Well, maybe he has there might be a Bon Jovi song. Dad, fuck Bon Jovi. He's not even <laughs> which real. would be bef- which would be before your 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 bon 1994. Jovi would be rolling in his grave right now. <laughs> Just so when Cody runs off in his scam hearse, he immediately gets pulled over by the cops for running a red light, and Morty picks him up from the station and whatever. Does that matter? I don't think no. Nothing matters so. there. No. Okay, so as for Leprechaun, the dude is using the force to make his walking stick float to do a spin the bottle type beat, and instead of like. <laughs> making out with whoever it lands on, he goes, whoever it lands on will be me wife. <laughs> but in the midst of this happening, this is when the businessman walks up. Okay. And he goes, <laughs> he goes, here you go, leprechaun. Here's my card. <laughs> He's like, if, <laughs> if you need anything, if you need to, con- to conjure up some business, Yeah, what kind of business do you think this guy handles? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what he thought he would accomplish with this guy on the side of the road, like, whether you think this is a leprechaun or a homeless dude on the side of the street, like, uh, uh, if he's trying to, like, you know, be like, hey, man, I can see you're in a hard time. I got you. Yeah. That's one thing. But he's not doing that. He's like, nah, kid, you got spunk. Get Call me. and <laughs> Let's work on. Let's collab. Maybe he's a famous director, man. <laughs> what? Uh, but what? he's got a shiny ring, though. He's blinging. He has this shiny th- ring. And when he's handing Leprechaun the card, Leprechaun goes... Oh, that's a shiny ring. I would like to put that in me thing. <laughs> what? <No. laughs> you just made that up. <laughs> Maybe I took some liberties. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> but he looks at him and he rips off the dude's finger as if he just ripped off a piece of paper out of a notebook. And he says, finger looking good. Mm, finger looking good. <laughs> no. <laughs> 
<laughs> so now he has a gold ring. And it just moves on. Like, the guy doesn't <sighs> die. It. I think this guy just runs off and goes, oh, shit, this dude <laughs> took my finger. The leprechaun stole my finger. <laughs> like, this guy's definitely just running around the streets of L.A. just going like, ah, ah, <laughs> just holding on to his fucking ring finger. <laughs> While the leprechaun's just sitting there on the side of the road with a stick, licking a finger. <laughs> licking a severed finger. <laughs> you can't tell me that's not the funniest shit in the world. Anyway, Cody and Bridget, they get into a little spat. And <laughs> she runs off with some other dude with curly hair. And they have their night together. He drops her off at home. She doesn't invite him in. And then the leprechaun steps in with a little bit of a... Uh, a little, little discreet, you know? He just hops in. He just... <laughs> he just hops in. Wait, when was that? In the garage. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> yeah, it just happened so quickly. So, yeah, she's just kind of being... A, yeah, she's showing a little skin. Whatever. No, she's not. Because, no? No, Lep, Wait, is... Lep made a hologram of her, tough guy. That wasn't her. Obviously. <laughs> You didn't say that, so it's not obvious to the listeners, James. We were getting there. I thought we were. James, help me. You're the, you're the podcast listener. You, yeah, no, you were. Con that was confusing. Because it's very confusing. They what wanted, he said, right? They wanted the viewers to think that it was her, and but then of course they. Then you gotta after, say that we're doing a podcast. Yeah, but we're gonna present it that way to where we say it. Did the way you that present it that way? I just was. I was saying she was showing skin. You're James, like, mediator. Judge. I think there's a huge problem with this part of the leprechaun's power set. <laughs> yeah. He's got you don't think he can turn into people? Sometimes he or make turns... holograms? I was going to say, sometimes he turns... It feels like he turns into the thing, and then sometimes like this, he's like standing at the side and like watching it play out. I watched Star Wars, yeah. <laughs> and R2-D2 <laughs> yeah. made a hologram. But who says leprechauns can make holograms? He's R2-D2 and Obi-Wan Kenobi <laughs> all at the same time. And he can use the force, <laughs> but he can also say, Obi-Wan Kenobi, you're my only hope. He has a myriad of powers. He's like Cartman in South Park has, in the Ninja he episode where he says, powers. I have the power you and have as used, many powers as I want. He this power in my movie as well. I just feel like it's the most poorly defined of his powers. Like, I don't understand how it works. So, he wills other people into holograms. But are they holograms? Yes. Do you know what a hologram? Do you know? Do you know the implications of the word that you're using? Oh, I think it's an illusion. He does a lot of illusion things. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's a genjutsu. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He's using it's a, a he's using a genjutsu on him. Okay. Yeah. I'm following. That's him now. actually kind of right. That is what he's doing. <laughs> Right? <laughs> that's what he's doing. Yeah. For my Naruto heads out there. For my Naruto heads. Yeah, that's, my that's, Naruto. that's probably the best way to describe it. Okay, so you're right. It's not a hologram. It's not Tupac at <laughs> right. Coachella. Right. Like a hologram would was suggest that, that there's science How involved. crazy is that? That was definitely over 10 years ago, right? Oh, for sure. How long ago was that? Like 15 years ago now? Let's find out. Dude, when was Tupac at Coachella? When was Tupac at Coachella? I mean, he wasn't really his hologram. What do you, that was him. That was really if him. If the Leprechaun I movies could, have taught me anything. That was 2012. 2012. Literally. So, again, 11. Just over 10 years ago. Yeah. 11 years ago. Wow. Yeah. Remember how, like, how crazy that was when it happened? And just how weird everybody was about it? Well, because everyone was like, holy shit. Everyone's going to be a hologram now. Yeah. And I guess, like, I get the mindset of that. Like, it was kind of weird, but, like... I don't know. There's like, what, two holograms? Since yes, we had Michael there's, Jackson. There's a few of them that have happened, Michael Jackson. But not Who many. else had a hologram? Um, I want to say there was another, like, like an older artist. I think they, they did, did, I think they did a Buddy Holly one. Didn't they do Biggie? They might have done Biggie. I don't know. Both of them. But I think they did, like, an older, older artist, like Buddy Holly or somebody like that, too. Who's Buddy Holly? Don't do this. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Talking about that Weezer song. <laughs> they literally wouldn't have a career if it wasn't for that guy. It's probably pretty true. <laughs> <laughs> because he stole his look. He was he wore glasses like Buddy Holly. Let's be honest, Buddy Holly wouldn't have a career. <laughs> <laughs> like 
Hey, to the if mullet. only you knew just how kind of heinous the shit that you're saying. Yeah, dude. The day the music died, you say man. If only I knew, as if I don't know. I don't think you really I mean, do. You don't think that- American okay, Pie. I don't dude. think you really do. All right, guys. I don't think you really do. All right, guys. It's fine. It's fine. R.I.P. We can live in a bubble. It's all right, bubble boys. So. After the man's after the end of this man's life came and went, um, shit. I, I no, I yeah. You, d- you how, how did he die? Boobs, <laughs> boobs killed him. <laughs> shit, is this an evil bong movie? Propeller boobs. Well, <laughs> it is evil bong one in a way. <laughs> why Goth did the boobs? Yeah. Why did the director say that he'd never seen the under underside of a lawnmower before? He was like, I'm from New York. Oh shit, that did happen. <laughs> and then the guy was like, Well, I was no, because he he asked the other guy. He go he goes. Well, have you ever seen the underside of a lawnmower? He goes, well, yeah, we had grass. Long <laughs> Beach. <laughs> we had grass. You don't have grass. You have a long beach. <laughs> Come on, man. Grow up. Uh, that wasn't in the movie. That was No, that was the commentary, <laughs> but that was pretty funny because I don't remember who that dude was. I think he was someone that was like hosting the collector's edition. I don't think I don't even think he was oh, a yeah, producer that, or anything. Yeah, I don't know who sense. it was. He didn't seem like he knew much about the movies. I don't know what was going on in that. Yeah. That was the worst director's commentary <laughs> I've ever watched in my entire life. If I'm being completely honest, it is that a was pretty worse wild than lawnmower though. It's got like two blades. Yeah, you know, it's pretty yeah, intense. It a pretty fancy lawnmower. Yeah, it's a pretty intense contraption. I almost thought it was like a fucking weed whacker with metal. Something. You know, I mean, it was like, it was pretty wild. Looking. It was a pretty crazy looking lawnmower, which I guess I haven't seen that specific lawnmower. Yeah, that one was crazy. The undercarriage of it. <laughs> um, I'll show you an undercarriage. Anyway, the undercarriage is shown to this man's face because he thinks he's about to stick his face in some titties. <laughs> undercarriage. He's actually sticking his face in an undercarriage. <laughs> in an undercarriage. I don't know. I guess the middle looks like nipples. Kind of. Mm-hmm. It's fine. He's dead. Is what I'm trying to say. And at the end of this man's life, Bridget hears a ring on the door. It's none other than Cody. Cody shows up. She lets him in. He gives her flowers. It's real nice. Mm-hmm. Real cute. And the little old lep just scurries into the house through the window. Like, they're li- <laughs> yeah. they're quite literally just standing in the kitchen. My God. <laughs> and like- he just jumps through a window. <laughs> like, just pops straight through it. I don't think he even touched it. No. <laughs> He just, just like, like, jumped directly through it. Just, hello. All right. And what comes next is baffling, um, because Lep makes her sneeze twice. And on the second one, Cody goes, gesundheit. And I'm like, okay, so it has to be bless you specifically for it to cancel. Mm. On the third, Cody attempts to say bless you. Germans don't count. It doesn't. (laughs) On the third, I think he's German. He can say that. Yeah, can we say that? Nope. Oh, never mind. (laughs) On the third, (laughs) on the third, Cody tries to say, he goes, bless. And then the fucking landline, the corded landline just like shoots out and it wraps <laughs> around his mouth. <laughs> and so he's like, oh! <laughs> like trying to say it. And then he like grabs a kitchen knife and cuts it off. But then the leprechaun pops up. He knocks Cody out, which is insane. But then he tries to take the wife. However, <laughs> he gets distracted when Bridget knocks his pot of gold over. Because anytime his pot of gold falls over, he's like, I have to grab every single coin right oh, now. Oh no, me pot of gold! Oh no, me pot of gold! It's everywhere! <laughs> <laughs> he's just like, he's just grabbing it. Ah. Uh, uh, dropped your god. Just dropped he's your grabbing pot of gold. at it. Yeah. He's just like going. He's like, give me the, give me this gold. <laughs> In this mess, Cody steals one shaloon. A shaloon. One shalong. A shalong. One shaling. A shaling. Shalang shalang. A shalang shalang. A shalang shalang. A crystal wang. Grabs it. Cody stealing the coin doesn't do much. <laughs> doesn't He's do got it. a coin now. I mean, it does in like 30 minutes, but it doesn't do anything for him right now. He's got a coin now. He's got a coin. But Leprechaun, he takes He Bridget. added one coin to his inventory. Yeah, that's how I saw it. You know, it's a story. You're going through, you just collect things so you can solve it at the end. Solve the yeah, case of your ass. Anyway, <laughs> Cody almost stopped him by throwing a fire poker with perfect accuracy at Leprechaun, but the Leprechaun grabs it midair, and then his hand starts burning because we're going to find out soon that he can't touch iron. Nope, but he can. 
but he can't. Oh, he 100% <laughs> can. They're going to break that rule five oh, minutes after they say it out loud. he obviously can. <laughs> every in all that, of the movies. In every movie, any rule that's ever given to the leprechaun, he can break within seconds. He'll, he'll say it out loud. He'll go, holy shit, I can't do this. And then just does it. And acts like it, it, whatever. Well, it's if fun. you if you were a mythical creature, would you tell people the rules? Nah, you just make shit up. Be like, <laughs> this is the rules. Can't get me. Just and then you'd be like, those aren't the rules, bitch. Just like, make really for yourself. What every seven year old did when you're playing a game. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I actually have the power to. You know what this game is called? You. This game's called I Win. <laughs> <laughs> That was you telling me that Back to the Hood is the best movie in the Leprechaun <laughs> franchise. <laughs> you know what this game is called? It's called Back it's, to the Hood. Just said it's better than In the Hood. That's all. I want. I, you know what? Someone remind me. One of you two. You. I'm. Ta- I'm not talking to the listeners right now. I'm talking to you two right here. One of you remind I'm me listening. to add that as the question to this episode because you could do like questions on Spotify. Oh sure sure sure. Uh... I'm gonna do. Do you think Leprechaun in the Hood, or uh, Le- Leprechaun Back to the Hood? Is better than in the hood. I'm not saying anyone's gonna agree. You okay. all you always turn this into like a popularity contest where you're oh, like, I always, where you're like, if I, if I can, I you, you straight up do. It's always, oh, let's do an Instagram poll. Let's do just because you can get more of your followers to vote for your side doesn't mean I'm gonna change my opinion. I'm sorry. Have you heard of podcasting? <laughs> what is podcasting if it's not for polls? What is and also, no, you know, you're trying to oh, win whoa, whoa, arguments whoa, whoa. with polls. No, no, you're no, not no. you're not having constructive <laughs> podcast polls. When was the last time you let people vote on a movie? Tell me that one. No. You just want people to vote on, is Caleb right or wrong? First of all, I've made people vote on movies many times. Second when of was all, the last time? Second of all... <laughs> when was the last time? Second of all... Yeah, you don't even fucking know. <laughs> none of my <laughs> listeners ever want me to win. Your argument is null and void. <laughs> yeah, sure. Keep telling yourself that. These people want me to lose at all times. If I ever say I like something... Yeah, that's why you have... A Patreon. <laughs> that doesn't mean Patreon. they want me to win. <laughs> Support it. I'm Think joking. Because they clearly do. Because they care about you and they love your content. And okay. now I'm going to make it soppy you know and make you sound like a piece yeah. of shit. Oh, yeah. gay. <laughs> We're not talking about in life. I'm talking about in, in happiness toward movie watching. They want me to lose. How often have I posted a poll and said, hey, I really hope. I'm not watching this. And they go, you know what? You're definitely watching that. <laughs> oh, you, you mean think once, But then you take shit into your own hands, and everyone's begging us to stop doing evil pong. I, you said that? <laughs> Remember when you said that everyone was begging? I said, wait a second. Tell me what they're telling you. I never got any of those messages. I got screenshots of people genuinely concerned about our mental well-being. <laughs> Let's be honest. It's probably two people. <laughs> That's not enough for you? <laughs> what does it take? <laughs> No, it's not. Two people out of thousands is not enough. I need more. People care about you, buddy. Just yeah, two it. people. Yeah, man. You guys are trying least. to make this argument that people care about me. You're like, hey guys, two people care about me. Yeah, you're just, you're right. Stop complaining so much. Two you're right. You should just stop. You should just stop the podcast. Oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> Leprechaun two. You no, know, I didn't watch the right movie. <laughs> I can't finish it without you. All guys, I'm needed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, where are we at? I lost my Oh, spot. no, I know where we're at, because this is when the leprechaun starts to teleport like Abra when you're battling him in a Pokemon game. Because it's another... Just add it to the list of his abilities. He has so many abilities. <laughs> but he teleports with Bridget, goes back to his lair, which is pretty much just a bunch of dirt and branches thrown about, and Lep is like, all right, time to get drunk. My answer to anything. And he goes, Irish whiskey, let's go, baby. Mm-hmm. And Bridget takes this opportunity to sneak up behind him and knock him over the head with a rock. Like, she's, she quite literally turns to the left, grabs a giant rock that's just sitting inconspicuously on the floor, walks over to him, and she's, like, creeping. She's, like, dun 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 And the whole time, Leprechaun is just pouring fucking shots. He's just, like, going, and he's, like, oh, yes, me Irish whiskey. <laughs> Oh, delicious! That was pickle juice. It was delicious. <laughs> um, and then she walks up behind him, bops him on the head with a rock. Like, I and saw I down. saw this set design here, and I'm just... is If it's a home... I'm just... there's I got a lot of questions. 
What's the first? So it's his home, right? But yeah. but also he just has like random rocks strewn about. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I mean it's not a great home. He's just it's, moving in, right? He's just settling in. <laughs> he's he's got enough in. room for the bar, but nothing else yet. I mean, her blanket was a burlap sap, so I mean. And then he got her clothes too. He made her clothes, right? No, that was the wedding gown. He oh, gave shit. her a wedding That's gown. That's coming later. Sorry. That's coming in soon. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I I don't think he's been in this house in like a thousand years. Oh okay. I really don't know. Maybe he lives in it and he only comes out every thousand years. I don't know what the rules are, if I'm being completely honest. <laughs> Who cares? They're going to change next movie. I didn't even know the guy had a house. He's never going to have a house well, again. That's what I'm, I'm like. He has this layer, and I'm just trying to like piece together like how any of that makes sense. That's kind of like Pokemon, too. Remember in Emerald and like Ruby and Sapphire when you could just yeah. like walk into a random tree or a random rock, and you're like... Pick, pick, pick. You hit it with a like pickaxe, and then yeah. all of a sudden there's an entire house. This is a there. secret hiding space. <laughs> it was so hard to find good ones that didn't have a tree in a spot, man. Yeah, man. But that's like, dude, they went off on that. That was crazy. Like Animal Crossing. Come on, man. This good isn't shit. just Leppy's house now, because he turns the bridge and says, this is your home, and then starts showering her in gold. Oh. He does start showering her with gold, and then he rubs it all over her skin. He also wrapped her in a sack before he did that. She's in a potato sack yeah, now. Yeah, potatoes. So she, did she sneeze three times yet, or are we still waiting on one? That happened, because uh, Cody got blocked from the oh, bless you. Oh, okay, I got it. So she got grabbed. This potato sack gold rubbing thing has to be some kind of kink, but we're going to move on from potatoes, that. Potatoes, man. <laughs> But he's rubbing he's rubbing the gold deep into her potato sack body, and then he realizes that he's missing one of his gold shillings, and he tells Bridget that he needs to run off and find it, but not before leaving her with a pretty red dress to wear, and also not before licking the side of her face as hard as he can. And he has so much saliva, his oh. tongue is like blue, green, yeah. silver, I don't know. Pussy, it's like, and it looked like phlegm that was coming out of his mouth. And... It didn't look great. Mm -mm. His tongue looks pretty brutal. But back in the real world, uh, since Bridget is missing and it seems like she was forcibly removed from her home, Cody is suspect number one because he left evidence at the scene. He's last seen with her, so it doesn't look good. And he tells Marty that a leprechaun stole her, and Marty's like, all right, buddy, maybe maybe you should go to... <laughs> Let's just talk about it a little bit. Um... That's, that's actually the best part of all the leprechaun movies is at some point, someone has to try to convince someone that leprechauns are real. <laughs> 100%. It almost always happens where they're like, no, you don't understand. There's a leprechaun after me. Well, let's be honest. That's the best part of like any weird horror movie. You know, it's like, no, this thing that's after me is real. And everyone's like, ah, fuck you. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Leprechauns. I don't know, man. I'm wondering, like, if you guys hit me up and you were like a leprechaun's chasing me. I don't know. I might hear you out. <laughs> of course you're going to hear the story. Well, that sounds yeah. like an amazing I story. <laughs> well, I do need to hear what's going on. If I came you said this leprechaun was chasing me. <laughs> like, you Have you ever had like, that happen? Of I, course it has. What are you talking about? <laughs> I, would I tell anyone? No. Has it happened? <laughs> You guys remember you remember that like that like meme news video of the leprechaun sighting? <laughs> 100%. <laughs> 100%. Yes. Which is like a bunch of people were just like, oh, we're just going to tell them there was a leprechaun. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> South Park made like a three part episode about that. <laughs> of course they yeah, did. Right. <laughs> anyway, as he's saying, nah, that's crazy. That couldn't be a leprechaun. Leprechaun pops up and just starts attacking immediately. And he does. And I, I actually really respect that about the Leprechaun movies because in a lot of these movies, they're like, oh, this is crazy. Like, blah, blah, blah. It's happening. And I feel like it takes a while for it to pop up. Mm, you know, it builds yeah. up. But in this, Leprechaun like just Ginger shows Dead up. Like Ginger Dead Man 2. Yeah. Yeah. But in this one, Leprechaun just shows up and he's like, fuck you. I'm right here. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't try as hard on that accent that time. <laughs> <laughs> I go up and down with how hard I try with it. Anyway. Um, he doesn't get very far because he grabs some iron bars and his, uh, you know, his hands start to burn. And I don't think that rule comes back in any of them either, if I'm being completely honest. Yeah, the iron thing. I mean, I know that that is like a, a folklore It's a thing, thing, and they will, they'll do leprechaun rules, but they won't track through all of the movies. Yeah. Like, he'll the do iron the same thing. It's, it's just too easy, right? It, if, how many things are iron? Right? Well... I guess in modern day, maybe not as many not things. Not a lot but these like, days. But okay, at the time that the Leprechaun movies were being made, <laughs> right, there was right, more right. iron around. For sure, yeah. More iron than there is today. And it just least. seems like yeah. it makes it too yeah. easy. Yeah. 
All you got to do, wow. all you got to do to beat this leprechaun's ass is to have one piece of iron, one one fucking pipe. How much iron do you think the average person has in their house, like today? I don't know, man. Hmm. And what do you think that is compared to, like, say, like 20, a lot of sh- 30, 40, yeah, 50 years ago? Yeah, a lot of ago, shit's like, been swapped out for want, steel like, or aluminum. Yeah. Or, yeah. Mm-hmm. Aluminum is, like, everything, though. Everything. Like, things that you wouldn't think are aluminum. You're like, because you think of aluminum, you're like, oh, yeah, cans and shit. Right. But then you're like, well, other things are yeah. aluminum. <laughs> yeah, iron is not, no. it's not plentiful no. nowadays. Maybe there's a good amount of iron that's not being distributed to us. We don't need to talk about uh, <laughs> the iron distribution in in America. <laughs> I think uh, I don't you know need what? any I, more iron. If I'm being I honest, I actually I'm good. feel like European countries probably have more iron in like house to house basis. Just because they have older shit, they have older stuff. Like even yeah. like when you get into like fireplaces and shit right, like that, yeah. like they're probably iron, right? Yeah, like iron fire pokers and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, even like twenty years ago. We had more fire pokers around. When's the last time you've For seen sure. a fire poker? I have a fireplace, and, and I we, don't have a fire Why poker. did we get rid of fire pokers? They're still just as useful as they were 20 years ago, but I feel like you don't see a random fire poker sitting next to a fireplace A lot of modern-day fireplaces are just gas. That's true. Yeah. But for people that have real fi- fireplaces, like wood people, fireplaces, I, think I people still... with real ones... Uh, uh, you, you should have a fire poker. You I'm should. not saying that you do. But you should have one. But that's my argument. I don't think people do. <laughs> and they need, should. You, they also need a bellows. Yeah. You know? Wow, Get that li- shit going. Life has changed. <laughs> 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 okay, so now that Marty and Cody are on the same page like we all are with this iron situation, Marty runs off to get drunk as usual. I'm going to do that. And Cody stays in the bathroom to take a leak. And then we hear <laughs> and see... Tiny black booties with a gold buckle wandering through the bathroom. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it seems like it has to be the leprechaun, right? Yeah, you're expected to believe you're that. You're expecting a leprechaun. Turns out it's not a leprechaun. It's Tony Cox. It's Tony Cox. A.K.A. Billy Bob Thornton's sidekick <laughs> in Bad Santa. How many Ooh. times have each of you seen Bad Santa? Like, part of it. Yeah, just like once. <laughs> it's not It's not a regular watch for me. No. I thought that was a regular watch for a lot of people. No. You know how I've often talked about movies that I've seen 50 to 100 times? Yeah. Bad Santa is one of those. Is it actually that good? I haven't heard Dude, anyone Bad, rave about it. Bad Santa is hilarious. Oh. I don't know if I'm the... I, I legitimately don't know if I'm the only one raving about it, but I know that me and a lot of people that I was around, like, I don't know, maybe middle school to high school because i think that's when i first started watching yeah. the movie like very very consistently yeah probably middle school probably even before i'll say that was I've the last seen time it before <laughs> it was what like maybe 2002 to six yeah. Yeah. i'm not for sure oh. um but i watched that movie a lot and i think it's real fucking funny i watched the sequel sucks <laughs> <laughs> um but the original i really like we're at 2003, the first one. Okay. I said yeah. 2002 to 2006, so yeah. I, was, I was around there. Yeah. So, yeah, I definitely started watching it way before middle school, because middle school for me was 2011-ish, mm-hmm. around that time, I think. Um, and, yeah, I don't know. I love that time. Yeah, I remember it getting a lot of hype when it was coming out, and then, obviously, like... Billy Bob Thornton. Yeah. Man. He's yeah. in Blood and Blood Out. Uh, yeah, he is. <laughs> Is this kid in Bad Santa the same kid that's in Trick or Treat that throws up the candy everywhere and eventually gets murdered? Oh my god, he looks exactly like him. I don't know if that is I can't is tell him. if it's the same kid or not, but they look very similar. <laughs> Have we looked this up before? I don't did, know. Didn't you do the Trick or Treat episode with me? Maybe. I actually don't remember. I can't remember either. I've covered Trick or Treat on my show. Remember, like... Old show. Do you guys remember, like, when you used to do podcasting and you used to remember every episode you did and, like, everything you said and, like, what was going on and whatnot? No. No, you never, like, I never had that. <laughs> I try to I keep you, up. I think Tough Guy still does. Tough Guy's still there. I'm pretty I'm pretty good at it. I think it. you're doing pretty good at that. Yeah. Huh. I also write a lot of stuff down because you say ridiculous shit. So. Name one. I just speak anytime. Just say anything. Officially, turkey, turkey, turkey. yes, the kid <laughs> the kid from Trigger Tree is the same kid from Bad Santa. He is the same kid? Yeah, he's also in Bad Santa too, so he, he comes back for the sequel. Oh, he's way older in that one, and it looks, it's just, like it's the reason it's why weird. the movie doesn't work as much, because it's, yeah. like, it, the fun of the movie was that he was so young and dumb, mm. and, like, when he comes back, he's, like, he's still dumb, but, you know, it's, like, when you gotta, I don't know, it doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work. 
It doesn't work. Like he's just is like, he at that yeah. awkward age? Is that what you're saying? I think so. Okay, I think it's just yeah. where it's that like happens. okay, like your dumb isn't as funny anymore. Yeah, you know? it's yeah, like yeah. you're just at this point you're now annoying. You, now you're too old to be dumb. I need you to just like get your shit together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's like hey man, we have dumb older people in the world, but am I gonna talk to you? <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, maybe I might. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this is you need to be filled up. Um, so now that Marty and Cody are on the same page, oh, we already talked about this. Oh, I got halfway through this because of Billy Bob Thornton. Um, (laughs) this is when Tony Cox gives him a coin, Cody. Right. And he goes, real milk chocolate. (laughs) You got to remember that. Yeah. Real milk. I think James only saw the second half of this. I remember that. I remember that coming back. So this leads up (laughs) to a drinking competition between Morty and the leprechaun, which is probably... The reason I love this movie so much, I think it's hilarious, and I want to watch the Leprechaun drink against people very often. <laughs> it's very, very, very funny. So they're drinking against each other, and he goes, "Drink what you want. Drink what you're able. If you're drinking with me, you'll be under the table." <laughs> It was pretty good. Great delivery. It's great. Great line. Great. All of it. Just great. And um, if we have not mentioned yet, Lep is sh- surrounded by very short people. Yeah. A many of them. A many of them. And they're all very enthused that Lep is going against a taller person. Yeah. So they start chanting. So they go, come on, let's cheer him on. He's one of us. He's one of us. And there's like He's one of us. Celtic music playing too, all that. It's pretty great. The Irish music is going full force. <laughs> and he's one of us. He's and our man Lep, he, chub- he chugs an entire bottle of whiskey. Good old Lep, man. <laughs> Entire bottle. <laughs> and he's fucking wasted at this point. He goes, Pour what you want. Pour what you can. He won't beat me. Because I'm Leprechaun. <laughs> I love it when the rhymes are like such a stretch. <laughs> I love it when the rhymes rhyme so hard like this because he's wasted and he can't even say the last word right so it happens to rhyme because if if he said leprechaun it wouldn't rhyme but he said leprechaun and it worked he's spitting dude (laughs) he's and this whole time like his you will only get this if you're watching the youtube or spotify video of it but his eyes are going Like, he's bouncing around the whole fucking room. We call, we call him Warwick Davis eyes. Dude, he is <laughs> wasted. <laughs> Explain the joke. I got that one. There's a song, a really yeah. famous song called Betty Davis eyes. Is it by Buddy Holly? No. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> call back. Um, so now Morty starts to uh, rhyme words with Lep. Or back at the lep. And uh, he starts to demand things of him, which kind of pisses the leprechaun off. And in response, the leprechaun levitates an ashtray. And this was probably one of my favorite parts of the movie because he's wasted. And he's trying to bring his ashtray over him and his eyes are bouncing in circles. Like they're <laughs> bouncing all around and the ashtray is coming over to him. And it's like... Wait, so like the- he legitimately has trouble concentrating on his powers because yeah. he's drunk. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, you know, like, <laughs> say you are getting pulled over and you're asked to walk in a straight line. Yeah. He's trying to do that with his ashtray over to him. And it's... <laughs> fucking stumbling and bouncing all over the place and by the time it gets to him he goes fuck yeah I did that <laughs> and he's like yeah I did that perfectly and Morty goes you're drunk stop trying to levitate shit <laughs> he says don't drink and levitate <laughs> <laughs> the fact that That's Morty, true, man. Was, like five seconds ago, was like, leprechauns aren't real. Now he's like, look, dickhead, stop trying to <laughs> levitate stuff while you're wasted off of Irish liqueur. <laughs> so he plays some tunes, lep that is, through his telepathy force powers. 
and he smashes the empty bottle over <laughs> Morty's head. And this isn't with his powers. Like, he just grabs the bottle and he goes, <laughs> and just fucking bops him with it. <laughs> and then he scampers off. I love the way he scampers. He runs like Bree does in real life. And since he ran off, we now get the pleasure of watching just his, his antics for a bit. I almost want to call them Luna antics because he's a leprechaun. <laughs> Just put an L into it. Hmm. <laughs> Leprantics. Leprantics. Um, so some of it, his antics include being made fun of by a barista at a coffee shop. Um, <coughs> he makes fun of him for his height. He goes, hey, you're real small. What are you doing in a coffee shop? You ever, you're the size of a coffee cup. I don't know what he says. He just to him. keeps going too. He he's does just, not stop. He's roasting the fuck at him and like, like bad. And like in between it, he's like, ha, 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 "You little bitch!" <laughs> <laughs> he's just roasting the shit out of him. And this results in a pretty gnarly kill because after a while, Leprechaun gets pissed off. It's kind of like in Thanks Killing when Sheriff is like, "Oh, you know, I just support you, little guys," and he's like. Oh, fucking son of a bitch and he like eventually gets pissed off and attacks him that's what leprechaun does and he uh, he at first like stabs a knife through a desk through his hand yeah and then he like starts the coffee steamer and like steams his face until his face starts to bubble up and then like his skin i don't know does it melt off yeah. i don't know what happened it starts to like explode yeah it's melting exploding it and right good. before that uh he was like oh you kill me because he thinks he's so funny and he was like what a great idea and then he stabs him and gives him the espresso shower <laughs> <laughs> i want an espresso shower i yeah, don't that's, that's hot I, i'll give you one <laughs> so when we check out uh morty and cody's side of things they're messing with an obnoxiously large safe because i don't you know gold and shit i don't really know what they're doing it at first it's going to be explained pretty soon but this is when a cop shows up and Morty gets arrested. And this happens so fast that... What? It doesn't matter. Basically, my <laughs> notes say right here it doesn't matter, but the, I wrote them in a way that was so confusing, but I, I really just said it doesn't matter. <laughs> anyway, what does matter is that Morty convinces the cop to remove his handcuff, and then Morty knocks out a cop like in his prime. <laughs> Morty is a withered old man. This dude is on his deathbed. Oh, come on, man. 97 <laughs> years old at the least. Dude, he's out hustling on the streets, man. You don't think he can hold his own? You don't think a 97-year-old is hustling when they've got nothing their entire life? Of course they're hustling. They're trying so hard to be something, but you're 97. Is he really that old? No. Yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> 100%. You're almost convincing me there for a minute. I'm convincing myself. I looked it up. He's 97 years old at the time of shooting. Looked it up. 97 and a half. His birthday is in July. <laughs> this July? <laughs> I'm sure he's... Well. <laughs> okay, well. Rest in peace. If you are, look him up. <laughs> So, anyway, in light of being insensitive, he goes, hey, Lep, I got your coin. This is Cody, because he's hiding behind a door with a safe open. Mm -hmm. He has a safe open, and he's hiding behind a door, and his plan is to open the door after he convinces the leprechaun that he needs to run over to him. And this trap only works for this specific type of door. Does it? Yeah, right, because you, you can only open the bottom part, right? And he's got to be able to see him to, like, bring in the trap, you know, or to bring him into the trap. Rip Sandy Barron, who died in 2001. That's what I thought. Okay. So he is rolling in his grave over what I just said. And you're right. That's the only way he can get into the trap. And so he's and, running. And he, was, and he was only 64 when he died. Oh, shit. He didn't even hit 97? Well, rest in peace, Sharon. Sandy. Sandy. Sandy Barron. There it is. <laughs> I thought it was Sharon Barron. <laughs> that sounds so funny. <laughs> Sharon Barron. I'm the Sharon Barron. Sharon Barron lived in 97. 
<laughs> Look, he would be so proud of what we're doing oh, right now. God. I'm just saying, but I do love this guy. I thought he was a pretty, pretty cool dude. But the leprechaun is trapped. He's trapped because Cody goes, hey, I got this coin. And the leprechaun's like, yeah, 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 runs over, gets trapped in a safe. And they're supposed to save Bridget now, but that doesn't happen because Morty, Sharon Baron, tricks Cody into getting trapped in a different type of safe because he's like, hey, but that's once. Oh. Where's be twice? A, gonna be a bride. And then thrice! <laughs> anyway. <laughs> he goes to the leprechaun who's locked in the safe and he goes, Hey, buddy. Hey, you piece of shit. You're a leprechaun. And I got three wishes. Yeah, now. And that's when I learned oh you get three God. wishes. I actually Me didn't and know Tough this. Guy had to pause the movie and we were like, Wait, I thought that was Genie's. Yeah, yeah I didn't. it's both. I've never heard of wishes with leprechauns before. That's I new knew, to me too. I knew it was something about wishes, like you know, you go to the end of the rainbow. Yeah, I thought you just got a, the pot, pot of gold. You don't get the pot of gold. You find the pot of gold. Oh, four, three oh. wishes, and then I get. I think then you, you get you wishes. Take if the you pot find of gold the... because you're basically mm, holding the leprechaun hostage, right? I see. That's to my understanding, at least. So he has three wishes now, and when Morty asked for his first wish, he asked for the leprechaun's gold, and he gets it. All you would have it. loved this, James. All of it? He gets all of it? The pot starts growing <laughs> inside of his stomach. That's amazing. And like it's like a prosthetic where it's just a pot inside of his skin. Wow. On top of his stomach, it's basically. It's rough to look at. It's, it's really honestly rough. pretty disgusting. Like, it's gross. It's difficult. I thought you were going to say something. No, I, I, was just throw up. I was just waiting for the... I was just thinking about the part where he punches through to get... <laughs> to the goal. <laughs> You're right, because the leprechaun goes, all right, I'll save you. And then Morty's like, save me, come on. And then he's like, all right, but you got to wish me out of this safe. And he goes, all right, I wish you out of the safe. And I'm like, why don't you just wish that the pot wasn't in your fucking stomach? Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Could wish he has two right wishes now. left. Right. But he goes, all right, I wish her out. And the leprechaun goes, no, you have to unlock the safe. It's iron. <laughs> I can't touch the iron. <laughs> And then he no uh, for real though. Yeah, one hundred percent. Even his wish can't yes. be used to nope. open the safe. He wish he's trying to get him to waste his wishes. Basically, like he's fucking with him. Damn. Yeah. So he wastes his wish, and then he unlocks the safe after, but he doesn't even open it. And then this is what Tough Guy was talking about earlier. The yeah. iron is bullshit because he pushes the door open. Yeah. Oh. You can touch it. He just touches it and pushes it open. It's like, well, that was what you asked him to do, that you couldn't. Do. <laughs> and also. It's not like the iron has a force field against him. It just hurts the fuck out of him. Like, yeah, yeah, they does, showed a shot like, where Does he like... want to touch the iron? No, but if he really had to get out of the safe, he yeah. could touch the iron. It, it's like, it's going to fuck him up. But he could touch the iron. Yeah. So. Well, and if you know. he's trapped in a safe and the whole thing's iron, shouldn't it be hurting him no matter... Like, Where because he he's sitting on it. Right. It's touching him either way. Yeah. He can't float inside of it. Maybe they're special <laughs> shoes. What There's not. Of... We see him sitting inside of it. We get a shot of him inside of the safe. Oh, I thought he was standing. Safe. I didn't know he was sitting. We get a shot of him inside of the safe, and I think he is getting hurt, but I don't I don't remember for sure if he was getting hurt from getting from sitting on it. I think yeah. he was, like, touching around the edges. He was like, ah, burn, burn. Right. You know? No, maybe, maybe it's only skin skin to iron contact. I don't know. Mm. This is definitely happening. Um, Science. <laughs> So anyway, when science. He... <laughs> it's quite literally magic and not science, <laughs> but it's science. But science. I'm saying science. <laughs> but when the gold starts, because he because he wishes for gold, he being Marty, Morty, and when the gold starts going like, Hang a... on, Marty. what you just, you kind of mixed both of them there. It went Morty, <laughs> Morty. <laughs> Morty. Is that oh. Boston or New York? I don't know, but I like it. You heard it, so you got to tell me. It's Morty, Morty. <laughs> We got Morty over here. So when the gold starts to appear in his stomach, this might be one of the funniest practical effects in the world, like visually, but also just sound wise, because it's like it's like his stomach is lined with metal. Yeah, it's clinking around. In but there. I guess it's because the pot probably appeared in his stomach, but we don't see the pot in his stomach at first. We just hear the like the coins going down and yeah. clanking. So it's like, well, the pot isn't there yet. Unless I guess, I don't know, maybe the pot's growing and like it's raining specifically on 
the little pot. Oh, there's a rainbow happening inside of his stomach. You think the rainbow is yeah. from one end to the other and <laughs> the, the coins are clicking into the pot and then the pot gets bigger? I love that. That's what's happening. <laughs> Tracks in my mind. But it's fucking hilarious because you hear like, dink, 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 dink. <laughs> and it's like, wait, his stomach sounds like that? That's crazy. But then the leprechaun, I mean, well, he lets him out. He hops out. And then the leprechaun pushes the door open, like we said. And it's obvious that, you know, next up, the leprechaun has to get his gold back. So he rips the dude's stomach open <laughs> Damn. Yeah, and takes and it back. There's no blood or anything. That's the same thing that they did in the remake of mm. or the reboot of Leprechaun mm. with Mark. I can't remember what his last name is. We've got so many Marks popping around right now. <laughs> but I think it was Mark. It was the dude that played uh, the Lenny character in the original Leprechaun. Oh, and yeah, that was yeah, also yeah. Uh, John Wayne Gacy in the Gacy movie. Yeah. It was that guy. He's not John Wayne Gacy. He's not. <laughs> He's not that guy. But like, <laughs> so yeah, he gets his gold back. And then the cop who got knocked out. Well, okay. Also, this whole time, Cody yeah. is trapped in the closet. But there was a window open the whole time. He like he should have just. Yeah, he's busted through. He just got through the window. He just. Now you really he show it. Through. He just opened it. You just see a beam sure. of light, a beam of light coming. You through. see the fact that there's a window there, and you're like, okay, he went yeah. through the window. Yeah. It's yeah, fine. Because I guess you don't lock windows from the outside for the most part. So the cop who got knocked out earlier, this was a while ago, by Morty, because Morty, the 97-year-old man, can <laughs> knock out a cop in his <laughs> fucking mid-20s, apparently. Um, he gets knocked out, but he gets back up, and he finds Cody standing around with a giant weapon, and he's just talking to himself over, like, a dead Morty. So he goes, all right, buddy. This was yeah. definitely you. Yeah. So he apprehends him, but then Lep uses his classic, like, distressed child voice to basically get people to run into a situation blindly, assuming that a child is in danger and needs help. Because, like, oh, my God, help me. Oh, I'm trapped. And then the cop yeah, looks I've over. I've seen that trick. It happens in every Lepcon yeah. movie, basically. And the cop looks over at Cody, and he goes, you son of a bitch, what'd you do to that kid? <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, and then Morty or Cody is like, no, no, no. You can't do it. Don't listen to him. It's a leprechaun. And the cop's like, all right, asshole. He turns around. The leprechaun's in a go-kart that says, I want me gold, spray-painted onto the side of it. Yeah. And it has skulls on it it's and a, spikes coming out of the wheels. So like, many things. It's a sick cart. There's so many things and happening. And the director's commentary, Feldman or Fletcherman or whatever his name is, he goes, yeah, this is a shout to Death Race. You know Death Race? <laughs> I think yeah, also man. at one point he goes, yeah, I don't even really know who did the car. <laughs> Yeah. It's like, how do you not remember who did the car? I don't even really remember who Jason Statham is. <laughs> but, like... <laughs> the car yeah. reminded me of more, like, Twisted Metal. metal. Okay. <laughs> You're completely that right. That was a Twisted it Metal It reminds car. me more of Mario Party 5. <laughs> you say, it's very driving. much Mario Party 5, man. You remember the oh, fucking... Oh, yeah. Okay. I loved that Thank shit. Thank you. I loved that shit. Honestly, one of the worst car versus car minigames ever. But designing the car, the customization, was so fun. the customization felt awesome, and you were like, <laughs> "The oh, gameplay was terrible." Like, this is gonna be great, and then when you spawn into it, it's just like you can go in a circle and you can shoot straight. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's all it is. But the customization made I spent you feel like so much time was it like building Mr. My, my little Mr. car, gadget, Mr. Gosmo, something like that, Gosmo, something yeah. like that. I don't know. That's basically what's happening right now. So the cop turns around. He sees this go kart. And he's like, is this some kind of joke? <laughs> and then the leprechaun starts hysterically laughing, and he drives straight for him. And I'm not sure if the cop died at first, but then we watch back, and it's like, oh, no, it like implies that he died because yeah. the leprechaun drives toward him. Yeah, it was and a two-shot. Like yeah. And the screen shakes, so it's like, okay, he drove over him. Yeah. So he's dead. And then this is when James comes into the room, right? And says, Talk about this, James? Yeah, and he goes, oh, I think I watched the wrong one. <laughs> I think that was right around this time. You're See, right. I, I saw this part, I, so this might be where I th walked That's in. in my next notes after that part, after that kill. So. My next note is that the leprechaun tried to drive through Cody, but he couldn't because yeah. he has the gold shilling, so he just, like, glitches yeah. like he's a ghost. <laughs> like Rick and Ralph, Yeah, man. what is up with that? Basically, like, if you have the leprechaun's gold, he can't hurt you. That is a rule that's kind of consistent throughout the movies. Uh, not in the one I just oh. watched. It doesn't. Does someone no. have the gold and he still hurts them? That's the whole point of the movie. 
if you See? have his gold, he's coming after you. No, no, no. That is yeah, the yeah. rule. But can if his, someone is physically holding onto his gold, is he able to hurt them in Back uh, to the they, Hood? They find his pot in Back to the Hood. They have like a, I remember that a pot find, of gold that like yeah, yeah, yeah. they have an infinite amount essentially. Because like, they're holding when onto they it. dump That's it out, it just refills. Back to the Hood, isn't it? Yeah, they're holding onto it. And they're like, yeah, this lets us do X, Y, and Z. Uh, I don't think they know that. Oh no. Okay. Uh, Maybe that was in the hood. I can't remember. They just keep opening the thing up, and they're like, look, it's full again. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of coming back to me. Like, I don't remember the movie, but pieces are coming back. Yeah, I don't, like, I mean, he definitely killed those people. I don't know that they made a point to say that they didn't have any gold on them when he killed them. It gets very specific sometimes. But, yeah. And I know in some of the movies, if you have the leprechaun's gold, if he tries to punch you or stab you or whatever, it won't work. But I, you're right. I don't. I don't know if it's consistent through yeah. all of them. It's been a That's while. That's wild. And I don't want to commit to a series right now, but I do want to commit to Leprechaun. God damn it! Leprechaun's great. <laughs> Leprechaun's great. We'd be able to skip a couple. <laughs> it's better than Evil Bong. Um. Anyway, so this just results in the Leprechaun getting annoyed and leaving to go back to his wife, who tries to stab him. Like he shows back his like wife. Great. It's the end of my work day. Can't wait to chillax. I mean, really what I'm getting from this is uh, Leprechaun is the Ice King. 100%. He's going back to Gunther at the end of the day. <laughs> and Gunther's like, hey, you fucking piece of shit. And he's like, Gunther, come on. Why are you messing with me? <laughs> so Cody shows up to the lair. And honestly, I don't know how he shows up. I think it's because he has a gold coin. And he's like, well, now that I know I have the gold coin, I'm good. I can teleport here. Is that what happens, tough guy? Uh, yeah. How did he find the cave? They didn't. I explain. think that he was, was just there. I think we looked um, away for a second, but I'm pretty sure it's because, if I remember right, it's because he has a gold coin. So he's like, "Yeah, I can." Okay, yeah, summon I don't himself know. there. Sure. So he shows up, and now things just get wacky because Cody and Bridget are running through the tunnels, and Lep just starts popping up. Like he's sticking his face through holes in the wall, and he's like, "I <laughs> see ya." <laughs> and then they're like, "All right, fuck you. I'm going this way." They turn, and they end up at, like, a fork in the road, and they're like, all right, let's go this way. They go through, and they're like, fork in the road. shit, back in the same spot, but I think if we go this way, and then they run through, end up back in the same spot, and he's like, but if we go this way, he runs through, Bridge, Bridge is gone. That's the best part. It's hilarious. It's like, <laughs> you expect that to happen, but you don't think they're going to go through with it, and then it's like, wait, no, she is gone. No, it's hilarious, because they're holding hands the whole time so that they don't get separated. How do you get separated if you're holding hands? I know! <laughs> like, embracing closely. Like, like you would know. If, <laughs> yeah. Like, it's like, okay, if you come yeah, back and you're... He's just, he's just like, damn he's it, confused, where's Bridget? But it's like, wait, I'd probably feel you let go of my hand. You know what I mean? Yeah, so going, I don't know. Like he would know when he lost her. This is literally a but Scooby Doo gone. episode. <laughs> you guys might not guess this from like how we're going about this episode. This movie is ending in two seconds. Yeah, yeah. Eventually, Leprechaun morphs into Bridget as she usually does in all the movies, most of them. Right. And he kisses Cody. He's like, yeah, "I want to fuck the shit out of you." Makes out with him. Starts making out with him. Makes out with him. Sounds stupid. Um, <laughs> and he tricks him into giving him the coin. He's like, hey, give me the coin. You know, we just leave it here. Then the leprechaun won't bug us. And Cody's like, I don't think that sounds right. And Bridget's like, it's right. She goes, okay. You just you just made out with me. I'm horny. All right. <laughs> We're here good. We go. So, uh, oh, it's not her. It's not her. It's a leprechaun. It's a leprechaun being a leprechaun. So a leprechaun shows up, and then um, he tries to kill Cody, and Cody's like, ah, I'm dead. And then Cody pops back up, and he stabs the leprechaun with an iron bar. That's quite literally what happens. Yes. Cody goes, ah, I'm dead. Yes. And he's gone. It's Kung Pao. And he's, he's, he's non-existent. And then yes. he just pops back up and kills him. <laughs> yes. And then he says... Milk chocolate genius. <laughs> because, there it is. Because Tony Cock yeah. gave him milk chocolate earlier, dude. It comes back. Whoa. And the leprechaun blows up. Like, blows up into pieces. Explodes. It's great. And then the movie ends. Also, and his whole layer looks like uh, in a part of the obstacle course in Legends of the Hidden Temple. <laughs> yeah. Wait, Legends right? of the Hidden Honestly. Temple. Am I blanking? Nickelodeon. Yeah, it's before your time. Okay. <laughs> Nickelodeon? Yeah. Old man shit. I was shit. there for Nickelodeon, but... It's old man same. shit. Live action, and competition I show. Attack in the Power of Juju? Blue Barracudas, even Blue. before Attack in the Power of Juju. 
Rhetorical. I'm, I'm here for Tac 2, though. <laughs> dude, Tac 2, the game? <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, that game went crazy for no reason. <laughs> for absolutely no reason. I, I don't know what you're talking about with the temple, but Tac 2? Tac 2 is some good shit. Power of Juju? <laughs> Can't say that. They did. <laughs> You know what you can't say? Juju, also, can't what say. you really shouldn't say? <laughs> what? When you're describing Tony Cox. Because uh -oh. he's... In the credits. He's, he's, he's Courtney Cox's sister? Uh, no, no. No. Definitely not. But they have a That's mask. racist. That's what I'm saying. Oh! That's what I'm saying. I think we're trying, he's trying to get around to It was to, a segue. You, you got... You know? <laughs> Segway. They credited Tony Cox as... African-American... African-American leprechaun. Leprechaun. Could have used anything else. And you know what? You made a point that he's not dressed like a leprechaun. He's just wearing green. He's not dressed like a leprechaun. He has leprechaun shoes on. Yeah. 100%. That was just for the shot, though. You gotta have the shoes. The boots well, because it was the whole scene where it was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. The leprechaun coming. Right. He wasn't He wasn't he's dressed wearing, as a leprechaun. He's just wearing green. He's like wearing a, a green shirt with a couple buttons on it. Yeah. And he's got a hat. Like, not even a what a leprechaun Does hat. he even have a hat? He's got he a had green like a party bowler. hat. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's like a green bowler hat. <laughs> he wasn't a leprechaun. <laughs> if anything, there were other people in the movie that were more leprechaun than him. Yeah. Beside the actual leprechaun. Like, it could have been Guy in Bathroom. Guy in Bathroom. They could have named him, because it's on the credits on IMDb and at the end credits of the movie, and it says African-American leprechaun. It's like, all right, yeah, I get it. The guy's black. That doesn't mean he's <laughs> African-American leprechaun. Or a leprechaun. He's not, <laughs> no, he's not a leprechaun. I mean, I mean the the even I would have even accepted leprechaun impersonator. I would have accepted yeah. anything. <laughs> if I'm being completely honest, because whenever I Patron whenever thrown in bathroom when we were talking about that <laughs> in the in the credits, I almost said like, oh, there's a second leprechaun in the movie. I there's missed not. something. Like nope. there's there's an African American leprechaun because that'd be one thing if he was like. Leprechaun had a clone or something. I don't know. And it's like a different leprechaun. Yeah. I don't know. No. I guess it's still a weird credit, but it's like it's a black clone of the leprechaun, you know? <laughs> yeah. And they're like, yeah, African American leprechaun. It's like a Spider Verse leprechaun. thing. You know? and yeah, that's exactly. The only difference. It's the Miles Morales of <laughs> Leprechaun. The, it's all that we can come up with. <laughs> and I mean, like, that's still a bad differentiator. <laughs> differentiator isn't a word. Uh, you know what I mean. But like. <laughs> It's better than what they did. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know what I mean? So, that wasn't I don't know. the only wacky credit. We yeah, got so we got we <laughs> <laughs> Why is the film credited with two cockroach handlers? I didn't see a single Wranglers. cockroach in the movie. Specifically Wranglers, Wranglers. and an assistant. <laughs> Cockroach anything, wrangler, assistant cockroach wrangler. There was at most two cockroaches in the movie, so you're telling me you needed a separate wrangler for each cockroach? <laughs> I'm almost starting to wonder if it was the opposite, and maybe their location was infested with cockroaches. And they had to have handlers to get rid of the to cockroaches. Get rid of them? At that point, don't you credit them as, as we had two exterminators? Control, right? yeah. We had two exterminators that killed the cockroaches. But so maybe maybe they got rid of them in a if humane way, and they wrangled them no, and took them to a better I home. I feel like that has to mean that they <laughs> brought the cockroaches yeah, and I they're taking too. control of the cockroaches. That's how I would interpret it as well. There's no way it's anything else. <laughs> That's insane. But that I, is the most insane thing I know I've ever I only heard of. saw like a third of the movie, but I didn't see any cockroaches. Not enough to need two cockroach wranglers. <laughs> tough guy, when you saw that, tough guy went, I remember two cockroaches in this scene. We went back <laughs> and, nope. and we watched that scene. Not a single cockroach. Nope. So you know what, and, uh, and I agreed, because when you said that, I was like, that's the only scene that could have cockroaches. <laughs> and it didn't. If it's not there, it's not anywhere. And we might have fast-forwarded through the whole thing. No, I did not watch it a third time after that cockroach <laughs> revelation happened, but... This isn't Joe's apartment. This is... All right, I'm done. Is... <laughs> Six kills, one pair of boobs. Did we even mention? The f No, we didn't. You kind of... We yeah, went over the... that. Yeah, we didn't talk about how they weren't actually because her boobs. we were go we were focused on the lawnmower part yeah, of yeah, it. Yeah. But yeah. when her boobs are revealed, it's the main character of the of the movie, the girl who plays uh, who plays Bridget. Yeah, which is kind of like a leprechaun cheap way to like have characters get naked who it doesn't make sense for that character to be naked, right? Uh huh. I get what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like she's like her character's not in the movie naked. It's just this illusion yeah. that he's You're right, created. because yeah. it's the Tupac hologram, but then that gets naked. 
but obviously the actress did not want to get nude, so they had a completely different figure <laughs> pop in for a uh, for a double. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, you know, that's fun. But we had one boob count. It wasn't. That's one. That's two, right? Is that being that's a twice. Yeah. God bless you, Pepper. <laughs> bless you. We're good now. <laughs> <laughs> James, you're out of this. Would we recommend <laughs> Leprechaun 2? Yeah. Yeah. The whole I thought season. this was a great movie, honestly. Yeah. I don't I, I will say I went a little lower than when I watched it. I think the last time no, the last time I watched this movie was probably about two years ago. But the last time, like, I feel like my favorite watch of Leprechaun and I'm saying Leprechaun, but really I mean the Leprechaun series, was when I watched all of them in one day. That was my favorite. And okay, nowadays I get very tired by the end of my day, so I'm not following as much. But when I watched all of these in one day, I was awake the whole time. Like I was awake and I was Jeez. adamant, and I had very clear thoughts on all of them. Um, I never went through on Letterbox. Actually, I might not have had a. I don't think I had a Letterbox at the time. I think that's why I didn't rate them. Mm. Anyway, um, I watched all of them in one day, and then I went and Brie. Let's do Leprechaun Three, because it's in <laughs> Vegas. That's hilarious. Um, I really enjoyed this one though. I gave it a four star when I first watched it. This time around, I gave it a three and a half. Yeah, I've only seen the first, so I haven't seen any of the other ones. And I watched. Oh, so you're this far right now? Yeah, I'm this far, and I only just watched two last year. So, um, I gave it four stars on Letterbox a year ago. I'm gonna stick with it. You gonna stick with yeah, it? Still yeah, yeah. I still give it four. There was some things that bugged me this time than it did before, but it's I I love it, and it reminds me of just you know when you're a teenager and you're having B movie nights. Like this is a type of movie that you'd want playing on your B movie night. It's fun for sure. Yeah. It's a very fun movie. I think, uh, like I said, like kind of like you, you said, there were some things that pissed me off this time around. Yeah, I would bump it a little bit lower. <laughs> I don't need to, but no, I need to. It's not a four star movie. <laughs> really, I could pass with like a three, but yeah, yeah. for me, it's a three and a half. Yeah. What was back to the hood for you? Four stars. Four. So you rated the same that we rated this, basically. Yep. When James showed up, he was like, "No, back to the hood is the one." I had a great time today, <laughs> and I came to the conclusion, and it wasn't immediately, but it was later <laughs> because he started talking about like, "Oh, I just came off of Evil Bong," and I went, "Oh, I get it." You watched a movie that mentioned weed after watching 13 Evil Bong movies. I'm telling you, man. <laughs> and you went, you know what? This is the best movie in the world. I may be a changed man, but you did. I that. highly recommend Back to the Hood. <laughs> so I want to say this, and I don't know if even you know this, James, <laughs> but over the course of us doing episodes together, I think it's been like maybe not a consistent 100 episodes in a row, but I have been doing podcasts with you for at least... 100 episodes yeah, roughly you know time. like 100 episodes duration because i think when you popped on it was around episode 70 ish right mm -hmm. does that sound right i have absolutely no idea we're around episode 180 now and i don't wouldn't say you've been there for all of them right but you've been there for a lot of them mm -hmm. a very high amount of them and i will say that very often i will put you through shitty movies very bad movies and then we'll watch something that's not that good and you'll go holy shit Five stars. This is the best movie I've ever seen in my life. We're gonna and then find we'll rewatch it like two months later, and you'll you'll go. I think I was a little too generous on that. <laughs> you might be right. <laughs> I and still I still liked Back to the Hood more than what I saw of this one. I don't. I will never disagree that you liked Back to the Hood, <laughs> but I will go as far as to say that if we watch it in a couple years, I have a good feeling that you're gonna be like, all right. I'll update the letterbox it's if necessary. It's not as good as I said it was. <laughs> I'll update the letterbox if necessary. St. Patty's Day of 2023. <laughs> yeah, man. I had a really good time with this movie today. My movie, not your movie. Yes, My movie yeah, was great. Your movie. <laughs> I had a great time with mine, and I would definitely recommend it. I think it's one of the better um, Leprechaun movies. I don't remember. I, I used to remember my order. I don't anymore, but this is a series that I would like to go through. It isn't like when I'm saying like Evil Bong, I would like to go through that. That was like more just like gambling. Mm -hmm. I would to like see to see what it was about. I love Leprechaun. No, yeah, I actually 
just genuinely have enjoyed every Leprechaun movie that I've seen. Yeah, I've like, not I've not watched a Leprechaun movie and been pissed at it. Are they good movies? Like, granted, no. I haven't seen Origin or Origin or okay. the remake. But Origin legitimately pisses me off. Yeah, the remake also pisses me off. Not as much. It's it's all right. Yeah, that's fine. I guess that's okay. Yeah, I mean, I've seen. It sucks. I've seen one now, most of two. Uh, in the hood, back to the hood, and I've had. I mean, all of them are three stars or more for sure. For me, all the ones that I remember the most are one, two, three, in the hood. I guess space also actually. So one, two, three, four, and then in the yeah. hood, which is the first five. Yeah, the first five. Oh, you know what? Probably because when I watched all of those in a day, you know, like I didn't fall off as much in, back in the day. Yeah. But you know, a little fall, bit. after like seven hours of movies. It's a lot of movie. It's a lot of movie. But, uh, you know, I got the collection that day and I was like, I'm I'm doing this. You know. I'm doing this. Sometimes you do stupid things. So I have a fuck, Mary kill. James, you're out of it. Oh, <laughs> Tough guy. You have a leprechaun. The leprechaun's teeth. And the leprechaun's teeth. His teeth? Do I get his gold tooth too? No. Okay. He doesn't have one. He does. He stole well, one. Well, he stole one. <laughs> All right. Um. So I. I, mean, I was gonna do me, but I thought that was like an easy why cop is out two on this the one. Same thing. Because I thought it was an easy cop out if I went with anything else. And what else is repulsive in this movie besides the leprechaun oh, and the leprechaun's okay, teeth? So what am I doing with the leprechaun? Is the question. Basically. Can you kill it? Can you really kill him? That doesn't. Yes. <laughs> uh, by the end of the movie, yes. All right. So. I guess. I'm killing him. And you're fucking his teeth and marrying his teeth? Yeah. Wow. Dude, he's got That's bars. That's where I would have gone. He's got James, bars, go ahead and man. answer it. What are you talking about? <laughs> you, you can answer this. It, it goes for Back to the Hood or this one. It doesn't matter. His teeth stay the same. Yeah, his teeth are pretty much the same. Uh, yeah, I would kill his teeth, fuck his teeth, and then marry the leprechaun. Is that what the I said? correct answer? No, yeah. that's not what you said. I said I'd marry the leprechaun. You said you killed, killed the leprechaun. leprechaun. You killed the leprechaun. Yeah. And then no. you, then you wait. Why would you, you marry the him then? Why would you're you gonna marry? marry teeth? You want to get rid of his teeth? Yeah, like his mouth and teeth and all that, right? Dude, he's got bars, man. I want to steal some of those puns. I'm not talking about his vocal cords. I don't get that. Okay, well, moving I don't on. Want his teeth. <laughs> so his the teeth. next <laughs> movie is not Back to the Hood, but it is Future. I'm not saying we're gonna do that next. But I will say that Leprechaun is a series that, without a doubt, I do want to bounce around to. I yeah, think I've said that Yeah, we can revisit every... this at any time. So far, Leprechaun, I think, is the most consistent with I don't do one except for, like, every 70 episodes. Yeah. I think the first... No, I think the first one was, like, episode 17, 20-ish or something like that. And then, like, episode 50-something. And now it's episode 180. Leprechaun's great. So we'll do Leprechaun 4 on, like, episode 270. <laughs> so good. See, would, in, see you in 100 episodes. I would actually like to bring it up <laughs> soon, though, because I really, really enjoy the Leprechaun movies. Yeah, they're good. So I have a letterbox review. This was a four-star review, and it says, This one felt a little more put together than the first one, and I may even side with someone that says this is better than the first one. They are both fun, and I'm excited to finish the series! Exclamation point. Damn. The Leprechaun guy... Is quite the character, dude. He is love it. Something I'd say, honestly. So true. What do you think about that, James? It's pretty good. Uh, I could see the argument that this is better than the first movie, just because so much happened. This, this was movie. Tough Guy's review. <laughs> Vibes underscore Cleveland on Letterboxd, dude. That was a good review. <laughs> this is his review from January 6th, I 2022. I, I, I solely agree. Thank you. Honestly, all of, I, that's, all of that makes sense. I wouldn't give it four stars. I haven't watched the whole thing, so I can't say that it's four stars. But. I can agree. I love the first Leprechaun way more than this one. Really? Yes. The, the first Leprechaun, I think, is... You want to know what I rated it? Five stars? I give it a five star. Wow. I think it's a perfect movie. Oh. Uh, I think it's really fun. Jennifer Aniston is in a sundress. And uh, do I need to say anything else? Oh, it's they the... pop up with a Jameson in the first couple minutes. The dude goes, Ah, oh, I'm drunk off me, Jameson. <laughs> That's incredible. 
<laughs> five stars. Uh, what's the kid? What's the kid from Rookie of the Year? But it was like his friends with the long hair, and they were building the boat by the river. Yeah, bowl cut? yeah, that kid's in it too. You're talking man. about the bowl cut kid. Yeah, the bowl yeah, cut. Yeah, yeah, he's the dude that's like smarter than Lenny. Yeah, than Mark, <laughs> yeah. not Mark it's Jones, like, but what I think his name's Mark. People are gonna be so pissed. I like saying name. Mark the whole time. And it's not Mark. <laughs> Sorry, his name Mark. I don't know. Anyway, um, so. <laughs> I have a review of the podcast, and this might be one of the funniest reviews that I've ever read. Oh, boy. And I also agree with it. <laughs> it's four stars. Love the show from Detective Dotty. Dowdy? One of those two. Love the show and the crew, but I honestly could not listen to this week's episode. I've put up with Kim's eating and chewing <laughs> on the show before, but this time, I literally could not do it. Hopefully, things get better with future episodes. With this minor issue aside, dot, 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 dot. I'm still looking forward to future episodes. You shouldn't. <laughs> More evil bong episodes. I agree with you. During that episode, I told Kim, stop fucking eating. It was, it was the we razzles. We all tried. The razzle razzles, whatever they're called. There was she no. Was literally chewing gum. There was no stopping her. There was no stopping her. I ate goldfish during this this episode, but I muted my mic and I made sure other people were talking. Yeah. I feel like that's better. That being said, is she getting her show or what? No. <laughs> it would be the worst show on the planet. Um, so as for the listener emails, we have an email today from Savannah Mumbauer. Caleb, hi. I couldn't believe Sean Hunter's real name was Ryder Strong, so I looked it up on Wikipedia. <laughs> Bruh. His name is Ryder Strong. King Strong. What's funnier wow. is you were joking about <laughs> being a firefighter and being called Wilton Strong and how you should just be introduced as Mr. Strong. Dude, his dad was a firefighter <laughs> in San Fran. That's sick. I didn't know this. It all tracks. <laughs> I know you probably don't give a shit because the guy is irrelevant. <laughs> well... I give so many shits. Dude. But you and Kim had me cracking up. It's funny that this person's like, you and Kim had me cracking up. The last person's like, Kim is a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> also, I love when Bree and Migs pop up and Nia is in my top three favorite guests you have. You guys are going to be thrilled with the next couple weeks. <laughs> yeah. It's coming up. Well, it's coming up. You guys are going to be thrilled and other people are going to be horrified. We're going to have like nine people on a mic. There's going to be a lot going on. There's going to be a lot happening. Also, James Loki reminds me of Burt Kreischer. <laughs> Take it. James, remember when me and you saw Burt Kreischer like we three did, months we ago? We did see Burt Kreischer. And then honestly, remember whenever I told you, hey, they're doing an outdoor show this summer. Maybe we should go again. And then I said, you know what? Fuck that. Tickets are $90 for the cheap seats. That's fucking yeah. bullshit. I'm sorry. You lost me. <laughs> Is that how much it was for us when we saw him? We went, we went At that theater, it was like 70 bucks. Oh, that's not that far off. Yeah. It's not that far off. But it, yeah. But $90 to sit outside? Fuck off. Oh, I didn't listen. You said It's outside. an outdoor show at a, at a fucking... What month? Uh, It's in the summer. I don't know. Like August or something. Pepper's piss. <laughs> <laughs> it's hot. Pepper it's hot. It's no, hot and no, out, no, it's no, hot no, and outside no, and ninety dollars no. for the bad seats. No, I don't no, like it. No, 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 no. <laughs> so uh, he said, "I love his voice and his laugh is so funny." And I mean that as a compliment. And funny enough, the only reason I think me and James are friends is because I really liked his laugh. <laughs> I listened to his podcast and I was like, "This dude's laugh is fucking sending me." That's and all I hit need, him man. up and I was like, "Hey, dude, how's it going? Let's hang out. <laughs> like, oh, let me make you laugh." <laughs> they go on to say, I started following B underscore underscore juice, and I have to say that, hey. um, on Instagram because your episode of Slumber Party Massacre with Young Durag and Barry had me in tears <laughs> after that. That's a good episode. This email is great because it's shouting out all of my favorite people in the world. Uh, <laughs> they're like, Bree, Migs, James, Barry, Eric, everyone except Tough Guy. Yeah, right. Well, you weren't around at that time. We are being an asshole. Obviously. So, please I'm stay safe an and well. I just joined your Patreon. Thanks, dude. And I'm planning on finishing up your catalog on Spotify and then hitting up the bonus episodes on Patreon. Who knows? Maybe they finished by now because this, this uh, email was like... I think a month and a half or so ago. Yeah. Mm. So maybe they finished by now. Uh, this was from Savannah Mumbauer. So oh, thank you, Mumbauer. Do you know that person? 
No, shut up, man. <laughs> shut up, <laughs> sound like it was like personal. <laughs> no. Um. So anyway, if you guys want to follow us on all our socials, we are on Instagram at Horror Soup, at Night Shit Video, at Vibes underscore Cleveland, Twitter at Horror Soup Sucks. It's barely ever updated. Don't do shit on it. It's basically my personal Twitter letterbox is at Horror Soup Caleb, at Night Shit Video, at Vibes underscore Cleveland. And thank you to Ross Lee for the intro and outro music that you're listening to if you hear the audio version of this podcast. And, uh...